Professional wrestling. That hurt for real in real life. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Was it worth it? The stunt worth it for the gimmick? Professional wrestling means a lot of things to a lot of different people. To some people who like the product, it is a magical and entertaining form of storytelling. And to some others, it's a cool thing where people hit other people very hard with random objects. And to people who dislike wrestling, it's either a fake piece of sh masquerading itself as a real sport or a bunch of dumb hicks being trashy and hitting each other with random objects. So a common theme. And don't take that the wrong way. I'm not here to discredit deathmatch wrestling or talk about it like it's not true storytelling. I'm not that pretentious yet. But extreme deathmatch wrestling is more of an acquired taste. And while watching something more basic like WWE from an outsider's perspective, they can understand the story a little more. To the common man, all deathmatch wrestling just looks like backyard wrestling and nobody wants to be associated with backyard wrestling. Also, I know it's an argument that's been around since the dawn of man, that's not true, but how dumb do you have to be to think this is pretending to be a real sport? I never understood the appeal of being an adult and going up to another adult and being like, hey, you know that stuff's fake, right? Like, yeah, I'm not six. These people are constantly worried and like on edge because they think the show is trying to trick or deceive them in some way. And I probably can't show you the footage here, but just show like pictures from the zombie match. That is not the case. The reason I can't show you the footage is because most companies, when they believe you are using their copyrighted material, will just simply claim the video. It's happened to basically all of my videos and it's just a casualty of business. But WWE, they will block your video. Same with Viacom and a bunch of Nickelodeon shows. So I really picked the two worst to do back to back. Computer, what was the last video of mine that didn't get claimed? Oh, well, Shouldn't have bought all those McDonald's toys then. So as much as I would like to- What? Computer, I'm in the middle of a video. I'm like right in the intro. No, we're not gonna be talking about ships because we can't use WWE footage. I do like the shield though. I knew I wanted to make another wrestling related video for April, but I already talked about the TWF in depth last April. And I would love to give the WWE free promotion and talk about how I got into it, how it changed my life, how it became a hyper fixation and kind of got me through most of my high school experience. And how it was just a magical time to be in wrestling or just being there live for certain shows. But I guess not. And before we start spewing tribalism, their competitor isn't any better. They're gonna block everything too now. If I can't talk about the two major wrestling companies, what am I gonna talk about? Wrestling Society X is a 2006 short-lived wrestling show that aired exclusively on MTV. However, it wasn't the first time professional wrestling would air on MTV. The reason professional wrestling blew up the first time in the 80s is because of MTV and the youth. Short history, so I don't get trounced by the Fed and this video gets deleted. Wrestling manager Captain Lou Albano became friends with Cyndi Lauper after hanging out on a plane, I think, and then as a favor to her, appeared in her music video for her new hit song, Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. I I imagine most of you remember or know Captain Lou um, from his stint playing Mario, the live action Mario in the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Go to hell before you die. And then to pay back that favor, Cyndi Lauper would then appear on what was then WWF television. MTV had only started a couple years prior, but it already captured the hearts and minds of kids of that generation by marathoning ridiculousness all day. Sorry, I mean by playing music videos. Girls Just Wanna Have Fun was one of those major music videos, so people were becoming big fans of Cindy and then seeing her on wrestling TV and becoming fans of wrestling through her because they wanted to see more. This is a tactic that the WWE particularly never stopped using. Ken Jong getting thrown around by John Cena, Bad Bunny hitting a sick Canadian destroyer. We like Bobby. Do, do we, we love Bobby? Do we love Bobby? WWF, WWE, for the majority of its run was focused on the youth demographic graphic. But what do young people like? Whether that's a bunch of dude bros and frats screaming at their TV in the 90s whenever they presented Booby, or everyone falling in love with Jeff Hardy, this MTV generation was now actively watching wrestling. And this all led up to MTV broadcasting the first ever live wrestling match on cable television. So why is any of this important? MTV provided a good mixture of wrestling content and music content back when they 
cared about music content. Music and wrestling, I think it was, this was music and this was wrestling, sorry, I switched hands, have always gone hand in hand. Do you know how important a wrestler's entrance theme is to their character? They don't even need to be good, but if they walk out down that ramp and they have a banger of a theme, they're over immediately. Kid Rock and Snoop Dogg appeared on wrestling television all the time. Limp Bizkit is a playable character in SmackDown Just Bring It, Machine Gun Kelly's in one of them. There's an entire video game franchise where you wrestle as famous hip hop artists. We gotta bring this idea back. Even if you can't get the Def Jam rights, just let like Odd Future make a wrestling game. I'm sure they'd be great at it. Adapt Rapper Ninja Warrior into a video game Adult Swim there. It's made you a million dollars. And it's not just guest appearances. Music and the soundtrack is such an integral part of each wrestling video game's identity. The soundtrack for the SmackDown vs. Raw games, Skillet. Nonpoint, Three Days Grace, Ghostface Killer, who is in Def Jam Vendetta. No wonder I have the music taste I have now listening to Poppy, who also appeared on NXT, Motorhead making all of Triple H's themes. We need to bring metal back to wrestling. I truly believe it will save the sport. I believe it in my heart of hearts. My point being, mixing wrestling and music is a tried and true format. So in 2006, when Kevin Kleinrock pitched to MTV a modern wrestling slash music combo show that utilizes modern deathmatch rules from ECW and Japan, they went for it. And by went for it, I mean, they only aired 10 episodes and censored every single one because of complaints from parents. How punk. As much as I would like to delve more into the indie scene in post WCW landscape and the birth of Western deathmatch wrestling, I think the best way to find out why the show failed is to just watch the show. Episode one begins with their theme going postal, which is off to a good start. As the announcer in the ring goes absolutely crazy bonkers. No! I see where all of our budget went. Do not try this at home or anywhere else for that matter. They're smart for that because always saying do not try this at home as a kid. Me and my friends thought we were smart by just doing wrestling moves outside of the house. Like, yeah, this is much better. Let's do it on the concrete instead of my soft bed at home. We get our first ever Wrestling Society X match. And wrestling is nothing without its storytelling. The best way to understand the story is to understand its characters. So let's meet some of them. Matt Seidel, soon to be Evan Bourne from the WWE, best known for getting RKO'd really hard. But which high-flying wrestler isn't? Flanked to the ring by his girlfriend Lizzie, decked out in khaki short pants and a sweater vest. She's in her Courtney era. His opponent, however, comes to the ring with no one. Jack Evans does come out dressed as Limp Biscuit and does a sick side flip. We know which one we're supposed to cheer, because which of these two looks more like they're on an extreme wrestling show on MTV? Speaking of MTV, our commentary booth is joined by, in quotations, this is what they say, guitar legend Zach Wilde. I use these things a lot. He is best known as the lead guitarist for Ozzy Osbourne and as the founder, lead guitarist, lead singer, songwriter, and producer of the heavy metal band Black Label Society. I knew that. Didn't even have to look that, ignore that. Matt's girlfriend Lizzie looks as though she's above it all. She doesn't support this kind of need violence, and if that's the case, you're in the wrong building. Normally a small venue such as this, filled with niche wrestling fans, is the perfect place to hold a wrestling show, or it would be if any of them were real. They are all actors. Show the little Spongebob thing. Actors. Despite what they say on the show, the WSX is not live. They were filmed mostly in bulk. Recorded in bulk in what they call the WSX Bunker in Los Angeles, California, very aptly named. So because it was filmed on a lot and the show hadn't come out yet while they were filming, they didn't have any fans. So instead they filled the bunker with a bunch of extras or wannabe actors to push them in the direction of the story they want to tell. And while that's kind of lame, do you know how badly any company would want this? Being able to control what everyone in the crowd thinks and says and how they react? Because in professional wrestling, the live crowd is its own character. It's unpredictable. It's the only live show where the crowd can change the trajectory of the story. But in the bunker, all of them are extras. Not even wrestling fan extras, just like extra. I mean, maybe one person there was like, yeah, John Cena, let's go. But they're in for a rude awakening. They don't care about any of this. They just clap when the production team tells them to and try their best not to look bored out of their minds. Also because they were filmed in bulk, gonna see a lot of repeating faces. Just know that there was a part where I pointed out like, oh, I remember that person from the previous one, but it went on way too long and it wasn't really important. So instead I'm just having this bit here to tell you 
Yes, it does happen. Anyway, there's a cool dive to the outside and nobody says anything, but then the crowd sells a chop and a suplex like it's the 1970s and Bruno San Martino just invented wrestling. Apparently, Seidel's submission is called the Siamese Twin, which is... All right. Man, this crowd is not letting up. They must really care about Matt Seidel versus Jack Evans. I'm telling you right now, this fight is the same fight I saw with Father Morello when I was at the St. Alvarez's Church when I was 13 well, guys, years old. Oh. What? Now is as good a time as any to mention the camera work on this show. There's something to be said about wrestling being overproduced. When the show isn't live, you've had a lot more time to edit the matches. And each episode is 22 minutes. That's featuring entrances, commentary, and vignettes. Very rarely do the matches ever break double digits. Which would make sense because sometimes the camera will cut to a different angle and the wrestlers will be in a completely different spot. They're cutting all the matches down. But even when they're not editing it down, the show's got like three cameras and they're cutting between them at the least opportune time. And the cameras are shaking for a dramatic effect. If you go and see a movie and to make the action scenes look action-er, they just keep shaking the cameras. Leave the theater before you get a headache. And it's really bad. People think the WWE is bad with this. Show the footage of the camera guy bobbing up and down. Lizzie attempts to get involved until she is dragged into the ring. Jack Evans uses Lizzie to boost him up and then hits the 630 for the win. Time? Four minutes. The commentary team is an integral part of storytelling and wrestling. If they don't know what's going on, we don't know what's going on. I prefer a short stint over eight hours of weekly wrestling television, but this show can't even keep up with itself. The commentary team has like 30 seconds before it cuts away from them to convey what the story might be, and the wrestlers all have to convey it visually. The commentators say that Lizzie seems interested in Jack Evans after her boyfriend lost, but I mean, she is looking at him. I can't wait to see what happens to them next. Speaking of a sprint, we get this tag team vignette to set up all the teams in the WSX and it's really hard to follow. Tonight is gonna be just incredible. And where am I? I feel as though I was shoved inside a plastic wrapper. Just Incredible was an ECW original, or at least this version of his character was. And later in the show, the crowd will start to chant for ECW, which considering this crowd isn't a real crowd, Misfire. You see, ECW Extreme Championship Wrestling was the first wrestling company in the West to have a little bit of edge, to get a little grimy. The Attitude Era of dudes telling other dudes to suck their penises to completion and Stone Cold Steve Austin committing vehicular manslaughter all stemmed from ECW, the first to pull it off. It's worth noting that the Stone Cold character that blew up was lifted directly from ECW. ECW filled this niche that was forming of wrestling fans that expected high octane action until it eventually folded and was bought out by the WWE and the early 2000s. And other companies in the Attitude Era had gone extreme, but it wasn't the same. After this folding, there was a big ECW-shaped hole in everyone's hearts, and a lot of companies did try and fill that hole, but to no avail. But now in the year 2006, when the show was being developed, we have no competition. ECW is gone, and we're gonna be the best wrestling extreme show in the world. What's that? ECW's back? Oh, we're screwed, we're gonna die. The WWE revived ECW and made it their third brand on the Sci-Fi Network. I never watched it, so my only experience with it is SmackDown vs. Raw 2009 being rebranded as SmackDown vs. Raw 2009 featuring ECW. Also, three-player GM mode, that was pretty sick. But I do know that the show isn't great. I know at least it isn't ECW. Doesn't have that same feel. Later in its life, we did get new ECW originals that had massive success with their new gimmicks. We did also get the Monster Mash, though, which probably is bad, but I know damn well as a kid I would have loved it. Regardless of the quality, though, the WSX, which is heavily trying to emulate that era of ECW, now has to go head-to-head -head on the same day with ECW, the official brand, being revived with significantly less talent. I mean, they got just incredible. I wonder what other ECW talent they could... Oh, God. So instead of sitting here and having to explain New Jack to a bunch of uh, new people who don't know, I think I'd just be better off listing a bunch of stuff he's done. Praising OJ for killing people, stabbed a teenager in the head nearly to death in the ring, tased a man and threw him off the rafters to the ring, almost killing him. He was aiming for the floor. He was trying to kill him. Hit a 70 year old man over the head with a barbed wire wrapped metal bat, stabbed another dude in the back several times during a match. In his defense, he was playing a bad guy character in a predominantly racist white crowd. That's only excuse for the OJ thing. The other sh 
Holy f I'm not gonna excuse that. He's a f***ing dick. He's also a massive liability to have on your wrestling show, so props to WSX for being dumb enough to hire him, even if it is only for one night. Also, Teddy Hart is here, best known for doing so many flips he puked and having a very, very long controversies page on Wikipedia. So, this main event. They call it a rumble, but the rules are far more complicated than that. There are 10 competitors, and it starts off with two, and every 45 seconds a new guy comes out, and if they get thrown over the top rope and both their feet hit the floor, they're eliminated, just like the Rumble. But also, it's a ladder match, and there are two contracts hanging above the ring, but you can't go for them and win the match until everyone has entered the ring. And the two people who win, who grab those contracts, will then next week on Wrestling Society X fight each other for who gets to be the Wrestling Society X champion. That's very normal for a new promotion. You know what isn't normal? This f***ing match. So if you're the first in, why would you even bother climbing the ladder? Like, you can beat up a bunch of people to try and give yourself an advantage, but why would you want to climb that? You can't win anything until everyone has entered. Two separate people have to win, and they can only win by climbing those ladders, but the match is also elimination, so what if everyone gets eliminated except for one guy? Like, he throws them over the top. Does he get both contracts? Would he then just become the champion? We've got tables, live electrical wires, and a steel cage rigged with explosives. Oh, okay. This match just got a lot more simple. Just Incredible enters from a silicone hellscape as the crowd chants ECW when they're directly competing with ECW. Teddy Hart then enters and they throw a bottle back and forth. It's a real hoot. Apparently both these men were trained in Canada and I'm required by law by my new citizenship test to bring up Canada in every video. So I'm bringing it up now. Teddy flips into nothing, but he doesn't puke this time. That move is incredible, but they need to pace themselves, man. What do you mean they need to pace themselves? We got 12 minutes left in the show and eight more participants, all with their own entrances. Chaos emerges and sometimes you get some little lore nuggets from reading their descriptors, like how he's a former XPW champion, which isn't one of their direct competitors, but just better than them in every way. We gotta start rushing these guys out. We are rapidly approaching the credits. Vampiro comes out in a sick fit. He's an actual wrestling legend. I don't know much about Vampiro, but I know a cool dude when I see one. And then immediately play them out into commercial break. Now I'm not mad the show has commercial breaks. All right, it's a 22 minute show that aired on cable television. Of course, it's gonna have a couple of commercials. What I am upset about- Fans were back while you were gone. The action continued as Puma hit the ring, but he was immediately caught by Vampiro and instantly eliminated. What we missed? The show isn't live. Here's what we didn't have enough time to show you. Please, God, we're trying to fit all the moves in the allotted time and we can only edit so much. I do feel a little bad now that I made up a straw man to feel sad about. Is there a word for that? Like frowning clown man? I made a frowning cloud man to feel sad about? Now, we're live back in the ring here. No, we're not. Maybe you are. You are doing live commentary. We're just seeing it later. Then we get six pack. Okay, so remember earlier when I talked about wrestlers who demanded other wrestlers suck their penises? He's one of the sucker guys, or rather he's one of the suck -ees. Also for fans of my videos, but not fans of wrestling and the childhood trauma video, he was tag partners with Kane and their whole story was that he was the human side and he was trying to drag out Kane's human side a little bit by being partners with him. The first time, check out my RVD shirt. Should have wore the Daniel Bryan one. Also, I think I just shortened it to Pac there, and I totally forgot that there is already a wrestler named Pac, but I think his legal first name is Bastard, so I don't think it matters. And I don't mean to insult Six Pac, but what is he doing here? What does the WSX have for him? Some dude named Chris Hamrick enters, and I'm only mentioning it because maybe it's the quality of the video I'm watching, but he has the worst entrance theme ever. <laughs> Like, you should plan for people watching your show nearly a decade later on the Internet Archive, and you may think, huh, this match doesn't seem that extreme yet, and then New Jack enters to interfere and you dial 911. It's worth noting that MTV turned down Kevin Kleinrock's pitch to bring New Jack on as a full roster member, probably because they Googled him once. So his way around that was to give him a cameo as a manager where he gets in the ring and does a bunch of spots. At least that's what I thought initially, until New Jack jumps down to the outside and the ref informs him that he's been eliminated, and I don't think he knew he was in this match either. Truthfully, I have done as much research as I could. I actually have no idea what's going on here. He then grabs what is too small to be a guitar and too big to be a ukulele. That should have made a noise, right? There's so many spots where the commentators will stop talking for it to happen. How nice of them. 
but then it will fall completely silent. The ring in general lacks any sound. At most wrestling shows, they place a microphone under the ring. So every time a wrestler hits the ring, takes a bump, the entire arena can hear it. It's the same reason they stomp while they punch. So it sounds like you can hear the punches. You can't see that I'm stomping, but I am. But now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure the only time we've heard the wrestlers on the show so far is when they were mic'd up backstage. Aside from the commentators, is any of this arena mic'd? And on top of that, now I'm unraveling this mystery. I don't even think the commentators are in the same room. We see guests join them, but it's always a different shot. And this ringside area doesn't have a lot of extra space. But that raises even more questions. Is the crowd noise piped in? You already have a crowd full of extras there to do your bidding. Why do you dub over it? And most importantly, if you did have control over all of that, why would you make them fucking chant ECW? They're beating your ass in the quote read tweets right now. Sorry, I got a little off track. What's happening in the show now? I'm so glad I can just show you guys these clips again, because I don't have faith that I would be able to explain any of this. Then a dude named Heather's reference comes to the ring. With a bucket full of tacks, he spreads all out on the floor. You probably see where this is going. While that's happening, Teddy Hart gets eliminated through a table and the crowd cheers for him as it happens. God damn it, I hit the wrong button. I don't know where anything is on this thing. And now that every competitor is in the ring, the match actually starts. That's a huge ladder or a small man. Sorry for making you guys wait so long for this. Bump on the thumbtacks, and yes, it is as painful as it looks. Extreme! While everyone's occupied doing their spots, Six Pac wins one of the contracts, but it's kind of anticlimactic because the match isn't over yet. Doesn't even get to celebrate. Imagine the people backstage telling you you get to win the match, but you win in the middle of the match, so nobody really cares, and then you just kind of have to silently walk backstage. <laughs> I've never ran a wrestling show, so I'm no expert, but I do know a thing or two about camera work and editing. Just a little note, don't make a big deal about your firework explosion and then immediately show the recipient lying safely on a safety net. That's just me. At least they got actual charges this time and not Adobe After Effects electric table. Vampiro wins the other contract, meaning that the fight for the prestigious WSX championship will be between Six Pac and Vampiro. And then the episode immediately cuts the credits that zoom by faster than anything I've ever seen in my life. We're out of time, we gotta go. They're playing Date My Mom next and I can't miss it. And that would be the end of episode one if we didn't get some web exclusive content. That's right, due to the lack of time the wrestlers were given on actual TV, MTV ran WS Extra on WSX.MTV.com where we could get people talking, some promos, and more vignettes. So really not anything wrestling. This sounds like a complaint, but coming from me, it actually isn't. I like promos a lot, and I desperately want to know more about this roster. We see a compilation of clips we just saw, and you may be thinking, oh man, you're just complaining because you watched these back to back. They aired back to back. It's online content, but it went up the second it went off the air on TV. You're supposed to watch them like this. What a spot fest. Now seems like as good a time as any to figure out some of the teams of the WSX. We got that 70s team. Considering that 70s show had just gone off the air months before this airing, kind of really missed the boat. I think they were doing this gimmick on the indies, but I'm not sure. And they also play their theme while showing some clips from this show, confirming that yes, it is all filmed in advance. And the theme is a MIDI track, which I think is supposed to sound like one of those 70s porn tracks. Considering that the only thing that makes them 70s themed is that they're a bunch of hairy dudes, I think the theme makes sense. But one of them is named Magnum, and that's a pretty sick name. And then we get the filth and the furry. What? I don't know which one is the filth, but I'm gonna assume Matt Dog is the furry. I wonder if we're gonna see this dog persona. Computer, is there a wrestler who wears a fursuit while they're wrestling? I would very much like to see that. Steering? What does that mean? I want you guys to forget about every wrestler we just met, all the ones we just talked about, because none of them matter compared to this guy. The Human Tornado, the backstage analysts say he's into boogieing, but that could just have something to do with his theme also being generic 70s-esque music. But then we get some more info about him. His legion of fans are known as the Tornado Hose. He starred in Nacho Libre as El Snowflake. 
This man may be the best wrestler ever. He has already automatically become my favorite on the WSX roster and maybe my favorite of all time ever. I'm a tornado ho and I'm proud. We got Team Dragon Gate, who cares? We got Team Dilf. Scorpio Scott, wait a minute. Go back a little. Is that Seth Rollins? Former SHIELD member, Money in the Bank winner, Royal Rumble winner, United States Intercontinental Tag Team Universal and WWE Champion? That Seth Rollins? The guy on the cover of 2K18, just so we're all in agreement? Well, I guess he's here to f dads or something, as the team consists of the sensitive one and the intense one. Get ready for an emotional explosion. Are we... We talking about cum? They're an emo team, nothing more, nothing less. That's the gimmick. In 2006, 2007, very hot and a really good way to get heat for some reason. And then we get the Trailer Park Boys, which is just another popular show from the time, but with a Z pasted on the end. What kind of sick freak would put a Z at the end of boys? To be fair, this isn't anything new to wrestling. Professional wrestlers have been stealing their gimmicks from TV and movies for decades. Razor Ramon copied Scarface, Paul Burchill copied Pirates of the Caribbean, Sting copied The Crow, Sting copied The Dark Knight, Sting cop- I'm just saying it happens a lot and we're used to it by now. I will allow the Trailer Park Boys as long as they're funny. I'm glad we're meeting what is basically the entire roster right now. It makes things easier later. The only problem is most of the roster consists of tag teams and I'm a little lost on whose name is whose. Like for keeping it gangsta, that's their name. I did not name them. How am I supposed to know which one is Slim and which one is Ruckus? I don't know if that's a reference or not. Oh, here we go. A real character's character, Matt Classic. He was put in a coma for 40 years or so, so he wrestles like someone back then would. Doesn't enjoy shenanigans and tomfoolery when it comes to his sport. You are in the wrong company. What a perfect heel character for the WSX masses, because think about it. What do teens in the 2000s hate more than anything? Old people. Another bonus of watching WS Extra is we get an entirely new match that was probably filmed alongside the other matches, but they didn't have enough time to show on TV. That could be the case, or the team already knew the match was going to be on the website. You can tell because the crowd isn't selling anything nearly as much, and I don't blame them. If I was an extra there and the director came down, it's like, okay, I need you guys to sell this. This is gonna be on MTV. This is gonna be on television. I would be acting my head off. If he then came down, he's like, hey, this one's gonna be on our website. I'd be play like Sudoku on my phone or something. Because we had a three-way war between Human Tornado, the Southern Stomper, Luke Hawks. Sorry, can you say that again? I don't think I heard you correctly. Luke Hawks. Oh, okay, so we get a triple threat match with Luke Hawks. But that doesn't matter because the Human Tornado is here and I'm a hardcore tornado. Decent way into the match and Tornado shoots out of the ring and nearly misses everyone and yet the crowd noise stays the same. It's weird static droning. Like you hear it for the first time and it sounds completely fine, but the longer the episode goes, it's like this one crowd cheer mp3 but stretched out and it sounds like white noise i guess these are the tornado hoes i've heard so much about well i'm glad they're happy because every time they cut to the crowd in this match it's the fans looking bored but again I don't blame them. The human tornado does his patented dance to dick kick move. I love this guy. The best way to get into a wrestling show, particularly a weekly one, is to pick your favorite guy right from the jump and never root for anyone else. No! Look, Hugs! Hey, Chris, there's a position you must be familiar with. What? The commentators don't really add anything to the show, but they aren't overbearing. Yet, the camera shows one guy circling his finger to orchestrate a flip, and then the camera zooms out and he's still doing it, and he's the only one doing it. I don't know what I meant by that. Like, did I want the entire crowd all circling their fingers like a bunch of lifeless drones? I don't know what I meant. It just looks weird when it's just the one guy. Tornado wins and all is well. I imagine that match was probably filmed after the main event. In a normal wrestling show, that would be the time when people start to shuffle out, but no one here is real. I mean, obviously they're real people. They just aren't real wrestling fans. <clears throat> Not like me. I looked up the roster after this because I can only say so much without knowing anyone's names. And there's like 36 people on this roster. Also, everyone is listed under the alumni section because... He got cancelled after 10 episodes. So far, we've met Matt Seidel, his girlfriend Lizzie, New Jack, Teddy Hart, Puke, not to be confused with the actual wrestler named Puke, yes, that is real. How about we just move on and see what we can gleam? Episode 2 begins with a 3-6 Mafia joining the commentary team. This is going to be a regular occurrence. The musical guest goes to join the commentary team, and the team tries to get them interested and involved in what's going on in the ring, often to no avail. Also, every time the commentators tell them that they had a good performance, 
but I don't know where these performances are. I watched all the TV episodes and the online episodes on the archive, so copyright shouldn't be a problem, but I still couldn't find these performances anywhere. On the very slim chance that there's anyone watching this right now that saw this dumpster fire as it aired, do you remember the musical guest having a performance before the shows? Or maybe only the live crowd got to see it. The live crowd full of actors. It's sad enough having fake fans at your wrestling show. It is infinitely more sad having fake fans at your musical performance. Especially with this steady low tone clapping. I know I keep bringing it up, but that's only because it's all encompassing and impossible to tune out. Get ready, cause tonight we set the wrestling world on fire! Hey look, it's our buddy Lou Cox. I guess we're kicking off episode two with him. Last week, Luke interfered in the WSX Rumble, helping Alcatraz eliminate Chaos. Oh, is that what happened? I couldn't tell over all the other sh** happening. But forget about all of that tornadoes rise up. Human tornado is in the building. He does a cool jump from the rafters. Or he probably does. We don't get to see it as it cuts to the gimmick. Again, people talk about WWE being overproduced and over-edited, and they're right. But this is a moving headache. This guy's at the back. Oh yeah? What part of him looks like Michael Jackson? It looks like, what is this? Look at the wave! No, oh, oh, wait a minute, that's, <laughs> he's got the balls of steel, don't forget! Up and over, look at this, Cornado lands on his feet, and now it's Luke off the ropes. Oh no, what is this? Whoa, Lake is their takedown! I love you, Tornado. Is there merch I can buy that says like, I'm a tornado across a shirt, or can I just tattoo it on my head? After all that crazy shit, he hits a DDT for the win. It's nice to see a DDT finisher. We only ever see them in default creator wrestlers. Also, all the clips I showed, that was like the whole match. It's two minutes. But after Aaron Aguilera comes to the ring to attack the human tornado to take revenge for his partner, Chaos. But then Alcatraz rushed out to defend him and then Chaos shows up behind him with a ladder. I don't know who is on whose team. I could just hope to learn their name someday. I think a table spot just happened, but I can't tell because all of these camera cuts. I have a reputation. The springboard moves up. You're Teddy Hart, the best in Canada. I don't think he's even the best in this company. You think you got balls? Step in the ring with us. Yeah, we'll cut him off. What? You know, like how you neuter a dog? You gotta drop the dog thing, man. I definitely know which one is the furry now. That 70s team comes out to the ring with a completely different theme song now, and it sounds exactly like that one stock background song from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Behind the velvet ropes of Studio 54! They're facing off against Team Dragon Gate from the land of the rising sun. Joey Magnum hits his inhaler and the crowd boos. See, what you guys forget that in the 70s, they never took the asbestos off the walls. And Joey is a victim. All right, that's funny. I'll give that one to him. Team Dragon Gate accidentally shows Magnum's ass to the camera. And fun fact, this is not the last time we will see this man's ass. That 70s team beats Team Dragon Gate with a kick. All the other bits happened in the opening, but in matches this short, Everything is the opening. Dragon Gate pops the 70 boys disco ball and the commentators try to explain what's going on as fast as possible before being cut off by the Trailer Park Boys vignette. Her name is Jackie and uh, she has a couple of boys. These are two gentlemen who are adults already. They should have jobs. They should have some sort of career goals, yet uh, they don't. He said she liked everything. Man. We gotta talk about my mama. That's my aunt. Anyway, time for the main event, featuring the two contract grabbers from last week's Rumble. Six Pac versus Vampiro for the very prestigious Wrestling Society X Championship. I wonder who has the championship now. Like, the actual physical belt. I hope one of these guys has it and it's not just in a landfill somewhere. These are two legitimate legends, but the difference between their era and the new era, these new young stars, is uh, new young wrestlers will do cool shit to get clipped on Twitter and people will talk about them on the internet, whereas older wrestlers will focus on crowd work. The problem is that the only people watching this are on the internet and the crowd isn't real. Oh no. Six Pac spits in Vampiro's face, but it's not wrestling poison spit. It's just like clear actual spit. Oh no, water. The WSX is an extreme company, which means that its matches have unorthodox rules. You can do whatever you want. There's no disqualification. But if you climb the ladder before all 10 men are in the ring, you will be publicly executed. This match seems decent. 
I wish I could see it. I mentioned earlier that the ring isn't really making all the noises it's supposed to, and my theory previously was that it wasn't mic'd. I have a new theory. They both go through a table and it doesn't make a sound. It's silent. We don't see the commentary table in the same room as the ring. It's like a separate location. The commentary and pumped in crowd noise are the only things we hear. So far, we've only heard the wrestlers talk in backstage vignettes. I don't think they're using any audio from the actual WSX bunker. Anyway, there's a match going on. What's happening? Into the coffin! Holy the coffin! The ref counts something and then raises Vampiro's hand. I guess he won. And now the reign of Vampiro begins! That's how the show ends. I understand this as a marketing strategy. If every episode ends in confusion, then everyone will want to hop online and see what happened. It's a shame that they won't get an explanation. The next WS Extra online exclusive episode begins with a compilation of what we just saw. And the bald dude who hosts it with Lacey is also the in-ring announcer who causes the explosions every episode. And I do mean every episode. He's definitely lost his voice. Vampiro went beyond the normal, beyond the regular realm. It was extraordinary. And then they show us footage of the match we just saw and gives no extra details. As of right now, there's a little bit less than 36 people on the roster. A bunch didn't have matches. Your television show is 22 minutes long and you're struggling to fill time on your internet show. But anyway, you know, we got this match coming up with these guys, uh, D-I-F-H, I think it stands for like, uh, don't inhale funny herbs or something like that. I don't know exactly. I think it has more to do with dads. Sabotage job on us, you know, so hopefully that'll go down well. <laughs> Graphic design is my passion. Fabian the Explosion Guy transitions over to himself as we get another extra match, the Trailer Park Boys versus DIFH. These teams were showcased on the online show, and then this match was set up on the online show, and then the match happens on the online show. If somebody only watched the MTV part of the show, so most people on TV, they wouldn't even know any of these guys existed. What they don't know can't hurt them. I don't know what song DIFH is entering to, but it sounds like something I'd listen to in my bedroom in 2006 and cry. But it also keeps cutting out and getting louder and quieter at random intervals. Listen, we have one guy who's in charge of the audio, and he's also in charge of the visuals, and he also makes the explosions happen. He's got a lot on his plate. It's very telling which characters are considered heels in certain companies. Like New Jack when he started before becoming a murderer, he wrestled in Deep South and he was a heel because he wanted equal rights. Or how Daniel Bryan saying, hey, we should save the planet made him the biggest heel in the WWE. The heels here are the emo team and the commentary keeps throwing pot shots at them. Like, do you not know your audience? Oh yeah, don't worry. Emo teens despised MTV in the mid 2000s. These emo guys are gay. Haha, <laughs> you're watching professional wrestling. Seth Rollins, I know his name is Tyler Black here, but I'm just gonna refer to him as Seth. It's a sick spot that, say it with me now, the crowd doesn't react to. They just keep clapping at the same rate. Probably should have picked something easier for you guys to repeat. He took out all three of them. Possible future Olympian right there clearing that top rope. Well, he was partners with the illegitimate son of an Olympian. It's gotta be close enough. It's like a video game. The only thing ominous here is the crowd's constant noise. Because I'm a professional, Ernst. No, it's because I'm a man. Because you're what? what? You're emo. Get pwned, dude. Terrible ref distraction into one count. Normally, I wouldn't be talking about botches or nitpicking little stuff like this in professional wrestling because professional wrestling is incredibly hard and I can never pull that off. But the show is already so overproduced and over edited, they could have tweaked this in production. It's not the wrestler's fault, but it is the show's fault. White trash wins with nothing from the crowd. We don't even get the creepy clapping anymore. It's just silent. Oh man, we're getting an extra second match. We're not gonna get a clip compilation of the show we just watched. Back classic with the throwback outfit, reminiscent of the game Pro Wrestling on Nintendo. Holy shit, is he supposed to be Starman? Okay, this is the obscure nerd I love. Before there were proper licensed video games for home console, there was Pro Wrestling on the NES, which was actually a sequel to the game, Tag Team Wrestling. I only have this one. That's taking forever to focus, oh my god. It had characters like Fighter Hayabusa, Giant Panther, the Amazon, and of course, Starman. <laughs> oh. 
Starman has become something of a meme in the wrestling community and because of that has made multiple real world appearances. Which makes sense because wrestling nerds tend to overlap with a bunch of other kinds of nerds. Show here Kenny Omega Megalovania entrance dresses Sands. If we can, if the copyright gods allow it. That's actually kind of crazy if this was intentional. What an insane deep cut reference. Anyway, Matt Seidel comes to the ring with his girl and finally Lizzie has an outfit that doesn't suck. We're getting Matt versus Matt, a classic Matt off. Damn, I should have said Matt classic. While Seidel is focused on his high octane, high flying moves, Matt classic does more classic wrestling moves. This is a decent, simple story. I'm not the end all be all wrestling expert. I've been watching for a long time and you can describe wrestling storylines as confusing and convoluted as you want but when it comes down to it every wrestling storyline needs to be simple enough for you to understand at a glance a lot of people compare wrestling to soap operas because the acting is really over the top but that's because it's a live show most of the time it's theater you need to bug out your eyes and gesticulate your arms so people in row z can understand what you're feeling the point in this match is easy to understand i'm trying to compliment the show i don't think there's anything wrong with being negative when talking about a show but i do think constantly being like oh this show makes me want to eat diarrhea what were they thinking gets old very fast there's only one person who's allowed to do that and i'm gonna hold this nes game for no particular reason but it does suck matt seidel hits the shooting star press and gets the three count for the win very impressive victory by Matt Seidel over Matt Classic here on WSX Tour, even with the distraction of Lizzie Valentine at ringside. What distraction? He won the match. The distraction of positive reinforcement and emotional support. Oh right, I forgot we hate emotions here. And we all know Matt Classic states that uh, women should not be allowed at the ringside or in sports for that matter. But nonetheless, what a victory by Seidel. It's real interesting to see a show this dude coded, then turn around and say, this guy is sexist, that's wrong. Have you seen your own show? I don't know when she shows up, but the roster page also has a women's roster of one person? God, I hate Lizzie. She's just holding Seidel back. Also, this old guy hates women. I, I would never do that. I think I'm making wild assumptions about people again. We see a replay of Aguilera and Chaos attacking Lou Cox and Alcatraz after their tragic loss the first week. And then we see them argue backstage. Man, what's wrong, man? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong is that your ass keeps getting me in trouble? You're gonna get me in trouble? And where are you when I need you? I get electrocuted. You trying to make it up to me by jumping Luke? I need to come save your ass. And what does it get me? Kick to the teeth through a table. That shit hurts. You know what? That's a fair point. You don't hear that argument often enough. I got an idea. I got an idea how we get some payback on those bastards. Me, you, Luke, and Alcatraz in a TLC match. Tables, ladders, and cervezas. That footage you just saw was captured moments ago. It looks like next week we've got our first ever TLC match between Los Pochos Guapos and Luke Hawks and Alcatraz. And it's not just your regular TLC match, that's tables. I love that idea. So I guess next week we're gonna get that match. And by next week, I mean right now. All that on Wrestling Society X. There's so many women out there. Man, so, come on, man. Hollywood got something, man. Look at me, look. Yeah. Women watch wrestling, man. Oh, this is the payoff of the opening of the TV show. On the internet show. So they showed up on MTV TV, didn't say anything, and then explained it on their website. That's why they pay me the big bucks. That's why I went out of my way to watch all of these internet episodes on top of the TV episodes, because they feature either important, crucial lore details you need to know to understand the story, or stuff that doesn't matter at all, and filler, and just compilations of clips we already saw. Let's step back! Episode 3 does not start off with that TLC match, it instead begins with Vampiro in his lair. And you think I'd make fun of this, but no, I live for spooky my wrestling. This is the coolest thing we've seen thus far. Well, coolest below Human Tornado. Tony, Keely, Sparta, it's a pleasure having you here. Who are you people? I listened to some of their songs for this, and it does kind of seem like something I would listen to. Now you showed us some action on stage. That's nice. I would have liked to have seen that. Not for any real music reasons, I just really want to see how this crowd reacts to live music. Hit the explosion, that's how you know it's a WSX episode, and that's what sets us apart from the rest. 
That and our arbitrary rules. This company really loves its tag matches as we start the show with the Trailer Park Boys versus Double F. I don't want to keep teasing the genitals, but do you remember that woohoo yeah clip from the Total Drama video? Ooh, yeah! 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 Straight line and they're flipping around. The matches you got. Listen to the fans totally! I'm having like an episode trying to prove that this crowd is both pre-recorded and constantly on a loop, and then they put in this cheer sound effect. I can't ever really know what the reception of a video is going to be until it's out. But I really hope I don't sound whiny and complainy here. Question, guys. Uh, first of all, where are you guys from? Do we really have time to not talk about the match? Virginia. Wait a minute, what the hell is this? He ripped that cord out with that spark! Oh! oh. Never mind. The match speaks for itself. Strong conductor to electricity. What is this? I can't tell if the crowd is concerned or happy. If anything, they look indifferent. It's only episode three, but we've already given up on easing people in. Oh, it's Teddy Hart from way up high. The open heart. It makes the show seem more like a car crash, sure. But at least now I have more stuff to talk about. Let's turn up the heat. The crowd looks embarrassed. You'd think statistically that one of these extras would accidentally like wrestling a little bit. We see the exclusive backstage clip that was on the website now on the actual TV show. I guess they would need to explain the crazy main event we're about to have. Maybe I haven't been paying enough attention, but can you blame me? But Fabian, our announcer, lets us know that the next match has a 10 minute time limit. And I don't know if they've said that for all of them or not. Are they all on a timer? It would make a lot of sense. El Hombre, Blanco, and Mascarado. Now I took two years of Spanish and I didn't learn a damn thing, but I do know what Blanco means. From just north of yeah, the border. Yeah, very north of the border. <laughs> I'm looking at his skin color, it's very it's, north of the border. It's That's it. That's the gimmick. It's very easy for me to sit on this comfy couch. It's actually not really that comfy. I did think I actually hurt myself when I jumped on it. Um. Exactly my point, sit on this comfy couch and critique wrestlers putting their bodies on the line. And I didn't want Jack Evans to hurt himself, but if you're gonna jump down for your entrance, at least make it look a little cooler. Like you could have just entered through the walkway. You put yourself up there. I look away and then Jack Evans jumps up high and wins in like one minute. They did drop the little nugget in this match that pinfalls can occur anywhere. You don't need to be in the ring to win. Now I know there's no way they mentioned this before. They just made it up. I feel like we're about to get a bunch of outside finishes now. We get a Matt Classic hype package. The guy who lost his debut match. Jack Evans' loser opponent also technically lost his debut match. I wanted to look up who is behind the mask, and instead I found out that he made his in-ring debut in 2002 and retired in 2007 when this show came out. It's the last thing he ever did, and yet nobody talks about it. Also, check out this crazy cut in that match to a completely different part of the ring. All right, moving on to our main event, TLC match. Just a general note. Again, I'm not a wrestling promoter, but if you want your main event to seem more extreme, don't start your show with electrical explosions. Lou Cox and Alcatraz versus Los Pochos Guapos in a tables, ladders, and Cerveza's match. And Aguilera flirting with the Mama Cita. Oh, no, he missed! close lighting. Storytelling going full force tonight. Bunch of sh happens and then. Aguilera brings in the Cervezas and orders chaos around them. Then due to their miscommunication, the blonde boy takes a face bump on the Cervezas, if you want to call it that. The story here is the miscommunication and not working well of this team, when they're the only team in this match with a name. At least this one has a story. Alcatraz powerbombs chaos through a table and pins him for the three. Now. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't know everything. But ladder matches involve climbing ladders, right? Like the way to win a normal TLC match is to climb the ladder and grab something. Titles, briefcase, custody papers, anything. But no, I think this is the first ever TLC match I've seen that was won by pinfall. What was the point of the ladder? Like, I know why the tables and cervezas were there. Regardless of what I think, they did win. So let's throw it over to WS Extra to see what stuff they got cooking on over there. Jack? Hey, hey, Jack Evans? Yo, I gotta bounce, I gotta bounce. Man, you're my favorite wrestler, man. Did, did I accidentally put a porn video on the timeline? My name's Marcus Wright, man. I think I've seen some of your stuff on the internet, man. You know what? I'll check this out and I'll see what I can do. But you oh, know what? You gotta learn. Out. Please play that slap sound again. You know what? Like three more times, please. You know what? You know what? You know what? Wow. 
I hope these guys stay friends forever. One lesson first. What? Always watch yourself. Oh! oh. See what I can do, kid? You know, if I watched this show weekly on MTV, I would be incredibly confused as to why I never saw the beginnings of feuds. Oh cool, look at Scorpio Sky from AEW. Scorpio Sky Andrews! Or Scorpio Sky Andrews. That's a terrible name. You should change it. Don't worry. They drop it by the next show. He heads to the ring with signed headshots and he gives one to this plant crowd lady and she drops it almost immediately, but I don't think it was intentional. Oh yeah, he's fighting Matt Classic. Forgot to mention that. You know, like, oh, he's oh. on the knee walk. Hey, uh, That's just the like extra trick on Nintendo, yeah. for sure. All right, I'm absolutely a fan of this guy now. Based as hell. Matt's already super over with me. The Starman gimmick sells it. But going up to the top rope and missing his first move, Oh, classic. That's why they call him that. There's not much else to this match. Scorpio Andrews hits what isn't really sold like a finisher. He gets the three, but classic kicks out immediately after, which doesn't accomplish anything. See, that's what makes them different. The purpose of most indie wrestling companies is to put the young stars over, but not the WSX. I don't like to use the word jobber, but I absolutely love jobbers. They're my favorite breed of wrestler. Human Tornado is my favorite winner. Matt Classic is my favorite loser. Speaking of favorites, we get another extra match. We get that 70s team versus DIFH. It is a little strange that we have two separate classic throwback gimmicks on our already very small roster, but let's talk about something important. I really wanted to continue liking this band because their music sounded cool, but their commentary makes me want to rip my hair out. The match starts out nice with some bits. I believe Jimmy Jacobs, I just found out, has access to his MySpace account from his cell phone. Ah, 2006. And then, um. Now see, here's the thing. He, he, this guy, uh, he, the emo guy, he, the emotional guy, we can't have that. We can't have that. He's afraid to hurt Wait somebody. Wait a minute. Stomping right now. Look at it. That is so emo. Is it? Are stomps emo? Honestly, if you ask me, I don't think they're emo enough. This is not metal! You remember earlier when we saw Vampiro in his little creepy hangout den? When that's in your company, you gotta step your makeup game up. Anyway, right, uh, the commentary. This was the result of the power ballad right here, this emo crap. All right, there should be no emotions involved in any type of rock and roll about when this guy's afraid to hurt somebody. <laughs> and you can't hit an emo guy in the face. Yeah, you That's can't. wrong. The face is too pretty. He's crying right now. Hey, why don't we call the ambulance? I don't think this show has an agenda per se, but it does control who is booed and who is cheered. And the crowd noise dot wave they have playing is booing the Disco Brothers, but the commentary band have absolutely steamrolled this story. So who does the show want us to cheer for? Just for the record. Crap. Oh yeah? We're accepting here? Yeah, can you imagine that? I mean, dancing with some chick, chucking and jiving? Or it could be some dude. I still haven't figured these guys out yet. Oh my god. Ah, 2006. I'm not here to start a campaign against a 2007 MTV show that nobody cares or thinks about, but it sucks. <laughs> we see his ass again classic Magnum. I think this vitriol has retroactively made me a that 70s team fan. Hello you Chris! This emo kid! Jimmy Jacobs! Huh? Jimmy Jacobs! He's gonna be a liability to this because he doesn't want to hurt anybody. Can we get these f***ing guys out of here? Blech. These guys aren't real professional wrestlers. They're gay, implying that professional wrestling isn't already the gayest thing ever. Like, complain all you want, but don't pretend like we aren't all watching half-naked dudes grab each other all over. Why do I even bother watching the internet show? Oh yeah, because if I don't, I'll have no clue what's going on. So D.I.F.H., the sensitive Jimmy Jacobs, and the angry Tyler Black pick up the victory this week. And next week on Wrestling Society X, Matt Seidel and his girlfriend Lizzie Valentine will be back to take on Scorpio Sky. Plus, Wrestling Society X champion Vampiro will be back in the bunker. Okay, so not wrestling. Your champion won't be wrestling again. What is this, Brock Lesnar? I haven't decided who I want this video to appeal to yet. Am I explaining wrestling to non-wrestling fans or am I having jokes about wrestling? The video's for me and that's really it. Let's move on to episode three and we get another opening starring Matt Sydal and Lizzie. Oh, I almost forgot about the explosion. I can't forget about the explosion. <laughs> Scorpio! Yeah! 
See? Drop the Andrews immediately. The commentators keep saying that Lizzie is flirting with everybody. Like either some crazy miscommunications are going on or these guys don't like women too much. I'm gonna say both. The commentators are joined by the clips this week, best known for being a band that exists. Sorry if these guys are your favorite band, but there's already too much here. I can research each individual wrestler's full career, but I draw the line at listening to music. Lizzie is only ever out here to help Seidel, but they keep talking about her like she's a liability or a harlot. List of top heels in this company. Emotional men. Hairy, sweaty, gyrating men. The one woman. Lizzie and Matt do a cute little dance together. I'm rooting for them. Considering the first time I ever saw Seidel wrestling was five years after this, and I didn't see Lizzie, and this is the first time I'm seeing her, don't have high hopes for their relationship. Matt wins with the help of his girl, even though she's a liability. I know it sounds like I'm the one who won't let it go, but I spared you guys from watching the whole show. They keep bringing it up. What is this? They're writing on a come on. She's got the, what she calls Liz stick. Ah, uh, yes, her iconic Liz stick. God, I love 2006. Sometimes, 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 only sometimes. I don't love all of it. Can you hook me up? I want to be just like you. Check out my DVD, man. What's your name? My name is Marcus Wright, man. I think I've seen some of your stuff on the internet, man. You know what? I'll check this out and I'll see what I can do. That's not how that went. That's how it went. A lot of the time you need to watch old shows in a bubble. You need to judge them by the standards of that time. <laughs> But keeping it gangsta comes to the ring with a ladder. You see that ladder? That's all bling right there, buddy. Oh, they put down an open challenge for any team to come out and fight them. And by what we know about ladders in this company, it'll probably end in pinfall. That 70s team comes out to accept the challenge in what is definitely going to be a match. By the way, they showed us this before the commercial break. Are we still pretending the show is live? Did we give up? What do you guys think of the disco machine? I mean, come on, what is this? He looks like a big... So, a guy. This guy looks like the bigger version of a little person. So a person? Like a regular sized person? Also, what the f man? I'm gonna have to cut that out, I think. Kinda like the Blues Brothers and Tenacious D. What are you talking about? I don't even care about these matches anymore. I am incredibly fascinated by the weird shit the commentary has to say every week. For better or for worse, Magnum oils himself up. Flamboyant wrestling heels who are there to piss off the people of the time have been a thing in wrestling for a long time. His hair qual- Did he perhaps lean into some stereotypes that would later be found to be harmful? There was a gold guy who would wear a gimp suit sometimes. Why do I like professional wrestling? I just wanted to say that Magnum is doing a great job and I love him very much. No! Did you see that just stomp him into oh. the ring? Is that a walking? Okay, so they cut something out, and considering all the things we've already seen allowed on this show, it must have been pretty f***ing heinous. But also, to be fair, this show has strange stances on the stuff they do and don't censor. The non-Magnum one stands on a tiny ladder and gyrates his hips. They brought this ladder to the ring. Is he supposed to be filling the role of his actual small guy? Remember earlier when they said he looks like... You get it. But he's not. Like, he's not particularly tall, but he's not cartoonishly tiny. Some would actually say that is the average size for a ladder. Some would say that's the perfect amount. And that it isn't small. No, it's okay, babe. The big ladders hurt more anyway. Oh, no! The guest commentators are very upset that the half-naked wrestlers are touching each other. So remember when I said the show has strange censorship? They toss the disco ball at Magnum's head, but they cut to the crowd and we don't get to see it. Again, the television show with the exploding coffin and the thumbtack spot, and we can't see a disco ball to the face. We don't even get to see it in the Quiznos mmm toasty slamwich replay. <clears throat> right, so also I was joking before but this match did actually end in pinfall keeping a gangsta beats that 70s team And then the camera person zooms in on a woman's chest He just said it why would we tune back in? I feel like we got the gist of it. White boy starts already in the ring like the jobber he is, and then they tell us we're about to get another five-star human tornado banger, but he doesn't come out. Check it out, we got a camera backstage. Wait a minute. <laughs> what if 
they knocked him out in the family guy death pose. Six Pac rushes out, which would be a shock if they didn't show it to us right before the commercial break. But this obviously implies Six Pac is the one that beat up Human Tornado backstage, making him an enemy of the Tornadoes. Also, I love that this show is so short that the roster is literally fighting over television time. Hey, Hey, can we turn down the static crowd noise? I can't hear his promo. Also, is this the clip we were shown before commercial? I feel like it was slightly different and also the crowd wasn't this ear piercing. But in a massive shock, Vampiro does come out to accept his challenge and this kid pogs. And finally, since he won the championship, we're going to see Vampiro in action. Or we would've. Now, before I show you this, I want you to remember that professional wrestling is good and not dumb. A new monster comes down to the ring and takes out Vampiro. He drags his lifeless body to the outside and then shoots a Gaussian blur at him. Also, his eyes glow like Raiden and then the show immediately ends. The MTV execs didn't think what was a normal fireball spot wasn't appropriate for their exploding coffin show. So they decided to cover it up with a screen filter and add a laser sound effect, but still kept the selling and reaction the same. Regardless of their intention, this is now canon whether they like it or not. Their new monster that just debuted has the ability to shoot blurry at people. That's a power he has now. It's official, it made it to air. I sure hope they explain this one on my favorite internet exclusive show, WS Extra. Okay, so it looks like we have Jimmy Jacobs tomorrow. And Lacey, grab your mic, get your camera. I got something to say. We're already mic'd. The whole room is mic. Yeah, hold the mic to his mouth so we can hear him correctly. Human Tornado demands to see Six Pac next week after beating him up and placing him down in an embarrassing way. Storytelling. This week's edition of WS Extra. Can you believe what we just saw? Can you believe it? It just happened to you. I mean, Six Pac calls out Vampiro and then this monster comes out from the crowd. Okay, so we aren't even talking about Tornado. Did that actually just happen or am I just seeing what I want to? Is Human Tornado actually dead and I'm just hallucinating his ghost to fill a void? Enough of this recap and setup content. I'm here for the new exclusive match. We get another tag match of DIFH versus Dragon Gate. Yeah, they're coming. The ladies love these guys. They always go crazy for him. Look at them. Ladies are indifferent to these guys. They're trying though. Seth Rollins does his best Mac from Always Sunny chops and kicks to try and seduce them. Am I making too many Always Sunny references? I've been rewatching it recently, if you couldn't tell. What is this waving to the girls at ringside? Mr. He was waving to a boy. I wouldn't be surprised. He was waving to I a tell boy. you, the ladies I, love this guy. I'm trying to tell it you, he was waving to a boy. They're trying so hard to bait this band. They're trying to farm for more clips. And if they were smart, they would leave right now. And they are, cause they do. Like halfway through the match, the commentary team says, thanks for being here. And then we don't hear the band again. They can do that. They can just leave. Any band at any time can just decide to bail. Why have they not all done this? They called them gay, laughed, and then left. Do you guys want me to describe this match? The match is not the thing holding my attention right now. And it's a shame because it isn't a bad match. Most of the actual wrestling content on the show isn't bad. It's just, the rest of it is. Tyler Black and Jimmy Jacobs hugging him like they just won the championship. I mean, all right, you won a match. Easy. All right, that's Easy enough. Does it. Enough, Easy does it. enough with that. Enough with the hugging, okay? Wait a minute. No. Bro, is it gay to hug your homies after a tag match victory? What's gayer? Kissing men? Or whatever these bitches got going on. Emotionally secure. What does that even mean? Emotionally secure. Let it go. I have no clue. I'm not emotionally secure. Oh, I, I, I don't even know what it means. So. We can tell. Right now, I will support DIFH and that 70s team equally. But someday the day will come where they will be faced off against each other. And I will need to make a decision. A very tough decision. But that time isn't now. Right now, we have something way more important. A recap of what just happened. Earlier tonight, we saw the king of bling, baby Slim, and the regulator of the ring ruckus, keeping it gangster. I don't have any commentary on this. I just wanted to show you guys this. This is just a recap of the worst calls from the commentary team. 
they made a cringe compilation. And then yet again, we don't get to see the disco ball shot on the internet exclusive that isn't on cable TV and was marketed as a way to see content that wasn't on the show. I'm glad I found a way to watch this show and the internet show, but the only lost media I care about is this disco ball spot. And what about that bling bling ladder, baby? <laughs> what about that? Let's keep it professional, Fabian. Alcatraz and Lou Cox fight keeping it gangsta backstage while metal music plays over it like a video game. And that's one way to set up a match. I mean, you only have like two a show. You think you'd set up more of them. How many times are we gonna see this nut shot? I guess we're gonna see the payoff. Set up on the internet and concluded on the internet. The MTV general audience doesn't even know this happened, except they showed a clip of it on TV. The story of this match is Marcus Riot is fighting his idol that he looked up to until he betrayed his trust. And Jack Evans, I don't know, tries to kick his dick and balls again. This guy, he, he's mimicking him. He's like a carbon copy of Absolutely. Jack. Absolutely. I'll tell you, he, this guy thinks he's Jack. He really does. He's like the talented Mr. Ripley. He's taking his life. Gotta be a better way to word that. And then, despite the tax spots and shiny ladders, the coolest thing I've seen so far. Marcus Riot chops Jack Evans so hard it breaks through the static crowd and gets a legitimate reaction from the extras. It's like that one scene from Horton Hears a Who the movie. Forget about that. But speaking of emo, I really can't tell which parts of this are recorded in post and which ones aren't. At least they've mic'd the actual bunker now. That's not me being mean. They call it that. You want to edit their commentary? Edit the part out where they pronounce suplex as suplex. This is a legitimately engaging back and forth. Riot can predict every move as he's been watching Evan's DVD forever. Until he doesn't. Couldn't have had him win with a different move. It's just strange that he avoids a heavily choreographed 630 to show that he knows Jack Evans' move set in and out and then loses to the same 630. I got a pitch for you. How about Jack Evans wins by kicking Riot in the dick again? It brings the story full circle and also is probably allowed within the Wrestling Society X's rules if we have any rules, but it also shows his desperation as he's trying to beat this guy who knows him in and out. Or you could not have Riot lose. Like, I know it's pointless to get mad about a company called Wrestling Society X, but this dude got kicked in the dick for being a fanboy, got bitched out, and then lost his debut match. They gave this main event dude the Starman treatment. I know that the show only runs for 10 episodes, but they didn't know that. I guess Wrestling Society X isn't really planning for the future. And now, we'll leave you with some additional footage of that brutal attack on Vampiro. This is the same footage. All right, episode five, halfway point. Again, they didn't know this was the halfway point, so we'll see what they have planned. In fact, it might just explode! I hope we find out more about the guy who attacked Vampiro. Vampiro, what? You didn't recognize me. We had a war, but you rigged my casket with explosive. Are, are we supposed to know who this is? Because this did not happen in the WSX. Was I supposed to do homework before watching this? Oh, I don't know if I want to be that kind of dark alley, but one guy we're looking forward to meeting is Jinx. Who? These newfangled 2000 musicians are getting very bold with their titles. Let me ask you, what do you think the odds are we start this show with the tag match? I'd say it's probably like 80% now, right? We get Team Dragon Gate versus Team Filth and Furry. Two teams I don't care much for. You can only make so many furry jokes before it stops being funny. Luckily for us, we haven't reached that part yet. There's cool spots and the crowd is a lot quieter, but also, Maybe I just didn't notice it before, but has the bunker always been lit like this? Why are we fighting in a laser tag arena? And why wasn't I invited? They keep baiting their musical artist for commentary clips, but I think at this point we should just scrap it all together. We cut to commercial, and then when we come back, they tell us the best sequence happened while we were away. We didn't do anything. Why is this on us? You're the one that left. Maybe it's always been like this, and I've just been too dumbfounded and confused to actually pay attention and notice, but I feel like the ring looks completely different too. Red ropes with turnbuckles made of dirty laundry. And we can see the commentary now. They're right up there. The show is actually starting to become a wrestling show. Puke and Dog Boy hit matching top rope maneuvers and double pin for the win. Oh cool, Lacey made it to the main show. Episode 5 seems as good a time as any to shuffle everything around. Scorpio Sky challenges Jack Evans to a match because Jack beat Seidel and Sky lost to him, to assumedly get some kind of rock paper scissors advantage. Six Pac comes down the stairs in his pinkish shirt and tightest pants. Oh cool, we get a new angle on the death pose. This really is exclusive content. I forgot that the TV audience 
doesn't really know what's going on. I mean, they saw the death pose, but I'll just pop off for any human tornado content. Six Pac immediately whiffs tornado and runs to the outside. Yeah, I'm thinking we're doing this Wrestling Society X style. Has our ref always looked like a mall cop? If none of this is new and I'm just now noticing it, then I have a problem. You don't have to say region. You just said testicle. You're not censoring anything. You're not being coy. Look at this. Oh, another shot to the ball. Loving this ball-based offense. Pocket tornado and his balls of steel has no effect, but that rake to the eye does. Was this planned? Or do you think this was an on-the-spot decision? But then again, we obviously aren't booking for the future, so... Six Pac beats Human Tornado in single-digit numbers after beating him up backstage last week. So Tornado failed taking revenge. Is there anyone in this company that isn't a huge bitch? They're dropping like flies. It's just a turn of phrase. I'm still a hardcore Tornado. You know what? Had, had Pac kept it clean, I think that Tornado just might have pulled out that victory. But as we all know, I don't think uh, keeping it clean is in Pac's vocabulary. I thought there were no rules in the WSX. I thought we were extreme. Six Pac is the heel that everyone boos because he doesn't play by the rules. All right, let's cut to commercial. Oh, by the way, while you went to commercial, while you left to go to see your commercials that you want to see so bad, it's your fault. Team Dragon Gate got kidnapped backstage and driven away in a white van. That's real. I didn't make that up. That happened. Bids, while you were gone, our cameras cut this, this bizarre footage. You've lost one too many times. You must be reprogrammed. This guy, whoever he is, apparently abducted Team Dragon Gate. But where the hell is he taking him? We would have been able to stop them. Unfortunately, you decided to take a commercial break. You. The main event of our show, of episode five, halfway mark, is a double debut of two men we've never seen before. Eric Cannon. Eric Cannon with a lot of facial hair and a mohawk. Those are his most defining features. In their defense, that's also all we know about him. Can I be candid for a second? I'm worried a little bit I might be boring you. I knew when I started this one would be a gamble. I don't know who I'm appealing to on this video, wrestling fans or people that don't understand wrestling and want me to explain it. All I know is I've heard horror stories about the show and I just wanted to experience it. And we do get some goofy stuff early on like Raiden shooting an After Effects Gaussian blur at Vampiro, but I feel like it's not enough. I feel like not enough crazy and or dumb happening to even warrant this being a video. But I'm already halfway through, so I might as well continue. Let's just get to our main event. About a minute into this match, a gang of three burly men attack Eric Cannon and send him through a table. Then they wheel out a big wheelbarrow of wet cement and dunk his face in it to prevent him from breathing. Then they make a statement by placing a dead fish on his cemented body and walking away, and that's how the show ends. <clears throat> uh. Wow, that was very confusing and strange. I sure hope we get a bunch of answers to the questions on WS Extra and not a bunch of clip compilations of a match we just saw. Ricky Banderas. That's right, the burned and mangled face of Banderas. We learned what it was caused from. There's a history between him and Vampiro. This show is successfully defeating me in psychological warfare because it's ever so slightly gaslighting me by changing how the entire arena looks and then saying like, oh no, it looked like this the whole time. Oh, his face was burned the whole time. And they know I'm too fed up to go back and look. From now on, I believe everything they tell me at face value. I do gotta say though, I haven't gotten a good look at it yet, but the WSX title does look pretty sick. That basically allows them to get away with anything. And who would have thunk it? They show the cement gang beat down and then don't answer any of it and immediately cut to an extra tag match. Trailer Park Boys versus Aguilera and Chaos. Now remember last time when the Orange Boys weren't on the same page, but the Trailer Park Boys were on the same page because they're brothers or cousins or each other's uncles. I had to make the joke. They didn't make the joke. Somebody had to make the joke. Aguilera and Chaos get desynced and accidentally screw each other and then the Trailer Park Boys do the same thing. It's pandemonium. There's no rules in the Wrestling Society X unless you're Six Pac, f that guy. And I agree. Aguilera and Chaos win by having perfect team synergy and working together. I feel like we're losing the plot here a little bit. And also, not a big deal, but why are the Trailer Park Boys wearing wrestling tights. Forget Cena. If there was ever a wrestler where it would be appropriate to wear shorts, it would be them. We caught a confrontation in the hallway between Luke Cox and Alcatraz and keeping it gangsta. Let's take it to the ring and let the turf wars begin. That's all it takes, huh? I have no opinion on this match whatsoever. 
could go either way. That being said, they did bring out a blinked ladder again in a normal match, like they always do. In only 10 episodes, I feel as though this little dinky company had to have been the top destination for tag teams at the time. Everyone talks about AEW treating tag teams the best, like Wrestling Society X didn't average a tag match every 10 minutes. I'm still having a little bit of trouble keeping track of the teams, which is bad because we're almost over halfway through. Um, but there's only like six or seven teams, so I feel like we're gonna get a lot of repeats. There's only so many combinations you can do. Match over, ladder never came into play. Do you really care who won and why if it didn't have the ladder? Well, guess what? I just found out that next week that match is gonna happen. And we've got a tag team matchup between that 70s team and DIFH. I knew this would happen. My two favorite teams forced to battle it out. There's no way I'm watching that next episode. Plus, our musical guest, Good Charlotte. Good. Good. Good, good Charlotte. All right, I'll watch the next episode. Good Charlotte wrestling late 2000s. Why have I never watched the show before? Why did nobody tell me? I don't even care about the celebrity skit this week. I just want to keep moving. That will ignite the inferno. Lacey's apparently on the lookout for Vampiro when he's clearly hanging out in his dungeon. I mean, where else would he be? We're seeing one of the many matches set up last week in Scorpio Sky versus Jack Evans. I don't know who the general manager character here is or who's in charge at all, really, but I'm glad Scorpio Sky could get his match just by asking nicely. And here comes Good Charlotte, both Benji and Joel. What's How's up? it going? Pull up a chair. Let's fucking go. All of a sudden, I do not care about this match. Now, Joel Benji, when he grew up, did you ever watch wrestling? Did Absolutely. You get Yes, uh, I was always uh, Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, Randy, Randy Savage, Savage, The Undertaker. Oh yeah, good Charlotte. You like The Undertaker? You expect me to believe that? See, this is this is what wrestling's all about right here. I'm sure it was good Charlotte. They have names, Andrew. Refer to them by their names. No, their names are good and Charlotte. The crowd claps so loudly that the camera shakes. Crazy that they managed to do this while looking bored. Jack Evans hits his patented 630 and gets another win in his belt. He's moving up in the world. You're gonna start focusing on the mamacitas and cervezas starting right now. They're magic balls. You wanna touch them? What the? Hey, Disco Duck! Huh? What the hell do you think you're doing talking to our highness? Huh? Oh. Why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? Oh. We better make like a tree and... Whenever we see this backstage set, we know something beyond comprehension is about to happen. I appreciate this and all. Do not touch me, harlot. Next week, we challenge Hart and Young Dog to a match. And this time, we need the mamacitas at home. You did that last time. I say bring them out to the ring. Power in numbers. F*** all that though, because now we're going to get some That 70s Team content. Magnum, ha. have you seen those lamos we're facing tonight? They're lamer than the Ford administration and Pet Rocks combined. We totally owned you, lamers. Let's win this match, take their girlfriends, and make their eyeliner run. But it's ripped off your head and put your girlfriends. Jimmy Jacobs can't hit the ring without putting his makeup on, or I guess taking a bite of his quiz nose. I've changed my mind. I don't regret this video at all. I can't wrestle until I have my quiz nose. Joey Magnum Ryan kind of models himself after Magnum P.I. There it is. You just explain the gimmick. Then the emo boys come out and of course they sh** on them. But the insults they chose this time are that they're the girls' favorites. Like the girls love them. Which I never understood as an insult. Ah Look at them! Girls like them! I wish girls liked me. Unfortunately, they're right this time though, as Jimmy Jacobs gets distracted, getting a girl's number as Rollins is jumped. He's getting digits right now. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, and now look at that, oh, getting double teeth. Come happens. on. The nice guys finish last. To be fair, they are technically an emo band. He claims to be emotionally secure. Well, he's gonna be emotionally secured into that mat in a second. You got that right. Oh. Yeah, that'll show him good Charlotte. Good Charlotte hating on a tag team for wearing makeup and being emotional. Was I thinking of the wrong band? They still have the best commentary so far. Very low bar, I know. But they at least legitimately seem interested in the matches. I could believe they're wrestling fans. I mean, they know The Undertaker exists. Seth manages to tag in as he's about to hit a top rope spot. Joey Ryan pushes the ref, who looks like a 14-year-old stolen right out of geometry class, by the way, and knocks him down. Whew, that was dangerous, but I'm glad no one got hurt. And then Seth does the move that blew out his knee in 2015, but this time, instead of horrible injury, we just get more man ass. And considering the worst possibility, 
I'm not complaining. How many storylines in this company are about tag teams not being on the same page? In their defense, most of the roster is tag teams, and that's really the only story you can write on short notice. Good Charlotte, I gotta apologize right off the bat that's for all right. this. I, I've I seen a lot of ass here today. What? 70s team wins again with shenanigans. I wouldn't have it any other way. And with that victory, they have become my favorite team in the company. Sorry, emo boys. I want to be on the winning side. We're going to take you to some footage sent to us by that, that man who apparently abducted Team Dragon Gate. This is just bizarre. <laughs> hmm. This is a strange video. What could this mean? What I did just there, that's what I like to call an editing joke. But the footage they showed actually wasn't that different. So the tag team storylines for this company so far are team infighting, team infighting, kidnapped and forced to eat dog food off the floor of a garage, a team infighting. But coming up, wait a minute, it looks like Ricky Bender is headed this way. Oh no, Fabian gets attacked after this commercial break. Watch out, Fabian. You guys saw the future and you didn't warn him? <laughs> Actually, these guys might still be tied for my favorite team. Jimmy, do you not get it? We lost tonight. We lost. And the worst part, we lost to a bunch of hippies. I could still have room in my heart for two. Burn Victim comes to call out Vampiro, but we don't hear it because commentary talks over him to explain that he's calling out Vampiro. Vampiro does come out to greet him, but is then jumped by that damn six pock from behind. That music sounds familiar. That's you so The two on two brawl with each other and then split up for a bit and then the ring is cleared for a 1v1. Six Pac picks up a Half-Life trash can and throws it and accidentally hits a fan. That would be a lawsuit for sure if it was a real person and not a paid actor. WSX Bunker! Oh, no, no. Good God, Chris. Is he alive? He's barely moving. I can't believe he's still moving. I can't believe. Look at that. And look at the eyes. Look at Ricky Bear. Oh, my God. He's spitting up blood! I feel like potentially not enough people were checking out the website, which is fair. Most people that have talked about the show didn't talk about the online aspect of the show. So they purposefully ended all the TV episodes in confusion so people would hop online to see what happened to then get no answers. The upside to the crowd being full of plants, aside from just having them cheer whoever you want to cheer, is you can place them in really interesting ways for dynamic shots. I gotta hand it to him, people standing in the rafters looking down does make it feel more like a nightclub. I think it looks cool. But also later we see that closer to the ring, the steel barricade just ends. Like realistically the fans could rush the ring if they wanted to, but none of them have free will, so we have nothing to worry about. Unless they gain consciousness. Oh no. Our first extra match of the night is White Boy versus Seidel. And it wouldn't be a Matt Seidel match in WSX if he wasn't joined by his girlfriend. Hey, look at what she's wearing. Oh, look at Lizzie this week. Oh, she's, she's a sexy little thing. Yeah. Oh, so now she's gorgeous? I thought she was a harlot. Are you kidding me? You can't even glance with one eyeball. He's always accusing her of cheating. What are you talking about? Come on, Lizzie. You're cheering your man on the match. That was one move. Oh, come on. Let's just give him a kiss. Just a major distraction to everybody. She's so preppy trendy. <laughs> She's so preppy. Oh no, look at the rampway. It's Ebony Ravenway here to even the odds. I think it is is what Matt. Just to get ahead. Ahead of what? Oh yeah, she's totally blowing this dude to get an opportunity in the most prestigious wrestling company in the world that has four episodes left and is about to be canceled forever. Also in a company with no other active women, what could she possibly be fighting for? Regardless of them constantly saying she's a cheating distraction, she helps Seidel win, again, and then they bring up that Seidel is constantly jealous. Again. Is the version I watched on the archive actually not the real version and instead a heavily edited cut to cut out all the Seidel and Lizzie backstage segments we aren't seeing? I promise you I'm not leaving anything out. I legitimately have no clue what the commentators are talking about. In most wrestling companies, the commentary team knows the storyline and have earpieces so they can hear backstage so they don't accidentally come up with the story that goes against the main actual story they're trying to tell most wrestling companies. There are no rules and there is no structure. So am I pissed that the cartel kicked my ass last week? No, I'm not. Oh, is that who the fishmen were? The cartel? That's what that was? Dunking heads in cement. 
that's cartel business. And now our extra main event. You will never for the life of you guess what kind of match it is. Alcatraz and Luke coming to the ring and Luke, I'm your father, Luke. That would be funny if his name was Luke, which it isn't, his name is Lou Cox. And the Trailer Park Boys are coming out to face them. And then... What is this? Here comes Ruckus. Ruckus. Oh, wait. Keeping a gangsta. What the hell are they doing here? Baby Slim waiting for Luke. Oh, oh my goodness. Obviously, a bone to pick with both Alcatraz and Luke Hawks. Oh, Luke's on. Oh. Oh. Due to this interference, the Trailer Park Boys win and dance to their own theme music, which is a spot that always pops me and I don't think enough wrestlers do it today. I get that the gimmick of Wrestling Society X is that it's extreme and there are no rules, but if that's the case, why wouldn't every match end with a run-in or interference? The show is 22 minutes long and on average has like two matches. If I was backstage and got news that I wasn't booked, I would just run out and beat up whoever was winning. Every single one of these matches should have at least like three run-ins. To be fair to this episode though, we did get some answers about the fish guys. We know that they're called the cartel or that they are the actual cartel, like the real world cartel. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how the next episode is gonna live up to good Charlotte. <laughs> Episode 7 starts out with Bernie attacking the name I can't say out loud, but he attacks him in the middle of a quiet tribe performance. So there are performances before each show that we're missing. Has anyone seen them or has anyone recorded them? Because I would love to see these. Has anyone ever actually seen them? Also, Bernie puts this roadie through a table while they're performing. And I know, I know it's not their actual roadie. It's a local bump guy but they still interrupted their performance. They didn't show this kind of disrespect to any of the other musical guests, or maybe they did because again, we didn't see their performances. Gotta keep that MTV dream alive somehow. At least they're trying to involve music here. We cut to Fabian trying something new with a pimp hat and cane as the newly named The Cartel comes to the ring. My favorite assortment of big boys. Eric Cannon has some unfinished business with the dudes who put a dead fish on his cement ridden body. The last time I was in the ring with you guys, it took four of you to kick my ass. Well, that ain't going down tonight because my partner is the one man street gang Vicious Vic Grimes! Oh my goodness, it's Vicious Vic Grimes! Yeah, this guy we just met is about to fight off this whole group of guys we just met with a guy who is new to the WSX. After this, there's three episodes left. They're clearly building up to something big. Everyone knows that the cartel was the future of the wrestling business. Who's even in this match? Does it matter? If there are no rules to everything, why care about anything? But wait a minute, in the ring, who the hell is this? Is that Spider Woman? Can't move Joel, no, Joel hesitating, obviously afraid to hit this person because she's a girl. I commend the commentators on their observation skills. The cartel wins. I'm not sure which member, but I don't think they do either. They lay another fish on this wrestling legend who then immediately takes it off and no sells because it's the WSX and he's above all of this. We get a backstage segment with Matt Seidel and his girlfriend Lizzie with this filter placed over them to show their love for each other. I think it's supposed to be a heart, but they're awkwardly spaced so it looks more like a bent noodle. It also covers a big portion of the screen. Tornado as if everyone knows you're the only real pimp here. Are these the same characters we've been watching for weeks? I mean, week after week, the smugness, the arrogance displayed by these two. Again, we have not seen any of this. Maybe Matt and Lizzie have been replaced with evil versions, and that's what the commentary team is describing. But probably not. Or potentially, they're on the same page now. Commentators do tend to overstep themselves sometimes. They claim that the human tornado is trying to recruit Lizzie to his business, which is trafficking. I know that wasn't the word at the time, but you just described trafficking. I don't know if I could publicly be a tornado anymore. Recruiting someone in that line of business isn't called recruiting. Most of the time, having a fake crowd full of uninterested actors has proven to be a weakness. Most of the time. Human Tornado launches himself into the crowd and knocks a ton of people over, which would be a lawsuit if any of this was real. I'd love to show you the clip of this, like the whole video with audio, but what is an ongoing problem, it's all drowned out by crowd noise. Tornado coming off the ropes, look out, Matt Lizzie! Oh my God. Chris, I have never seen a wrestler take out a crowd like that before. Like, that probably should have made some more noise, right? No, wait a minute. Hey, speaking of Lizzie Valentine, the referee's... Oh, but you remember, he's got steel balls, That's Chris. right, human tornado. 
Lizzie tries to interfere because she's a supportive girlfriend, guys. But then a fan letter falls out of her pocket. Seidel seems upset by this, which distracts him. Lizzie tries to hit Tornado in the balls again, but that's his strongest part, and they end up losing the match. Before cutting back to the odd couple, we see some clips of the brainwashing team Dragon Gator going through, and I'm secretly hoping this has absolutely no payoff. I'm tired of this filler. Lizzie rips up the letter either to prove her love to her boyfriend or out of fear of him. Now, <laughs> that censor could mean anything. Maybe he called him a bitch, but historically they only censor really bad stuff. I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that. We get a match between Los Potros Guapos and Filth and Furry because tag matches are the backbone of this company. We're getting a random commentary cam from time to time because by now, even the show knows that their strange commentary team is the most interesting thing about this show. They also really, really wanna prove that the commentary team is in the room now and has always been. We always were. Oh no, dissension in the ranks. Again, Aguilera is distracted flirting with the ladies as Teddy Hart jumps at him and ends up hitting multiple fans. That wasn't planned like the previous spot with Human Tornado, um, but I'm glad he got away with it. They're just actors. They don't have feelings. It's the main event, which means we need a big spot by the dumpsters. Chaos uses a disco ball he's stolen from that 70s team on the furry for the win, and thank God we actually got to see it this time. I feel like behind the scenes of MTV, there's this big room with just a dog in it, and then two buttons that say, approve or deny and he's just hitting the button at random intervals oh hey cannon cannon hey is there anything you can tell me about the backup you're talking about okay so does this mean earlier tonight like before the main event or earlier tonight like before the show because he did have backup that came to fight the cartel with him who lost. Unless he's setting up another match for next week, which if that is the case, I sincerely hope whoever he brings out loses. It would be really funny. I'm not a hater, okay? I just think the idea of every week him bringing out a new guy like, oh, we're gonna beat you now, and then they lose every time, come on. That's really funny. <laughs> we wrap up the main show and then start WS Extra over on MTV's website. And I gotta say, I wasn't f***ing with Fabian's outfit on his own, but now that I know they coordinated matching outfits, I'm on board. I would unironically wear this. Uh, but then claim it was ironic if anyone mentioned it. We get another extra match. Lou Cox and Alcatraz gotta get a team name soon because I don't know how much longer I can keep up this cock joke. Let's call them... Prison Wallet. And their opponents... Are the regulator of the ring, Ruckus, and the king of bling, Baby Slim. Keep it gangsta! Was... Was the name not keeping it gangsta? This is what I'm talking about. Like, I'm not interested enough to go back and check, but I swear it was something different. This show's gaslighting me. KIG bring out a bling table with their initials on it to match the blinged out ladder. But this one just kind of looks like a glitter bedazzled school project. Like one of those three pronged dividers you see at like a science fair. Cause everyone loves hanging out at the science fair. At least we get some hardcore fun out of it. Could you guys please stop cutting? I'm trying to see the spot. I know this isn't important and doesn't push forward any storylines, but it's insane to me that the most interesting match of the night was on their internet exclusive show. They put all their eggs in the wrong basket. I think they thought like, oh, this TV show is gonna go forever. What we need is to support the, the internet show. That's what people need to see because they're not watching. Let's make the internet show cool. But because of that, they failed to realize that nobody's watching the TV show and then it got canceled. We couldn't bump the cartel squash match. Even future stars like Scorpio Sky are stuck down here. Hey. One of the more arrogant stars of the WSX next to Matt Seidel. What is your deal, man? Like, for real, did he steal your girlfriend or kill your mom or something? I mean, who could hate this face? And remember... Everyone knows that you're the only real pimp here. Bernie attacks the name I can't say, again, unless this is meant to take place before the lead into the concert. But then why would the band already be at commentary? I gotta stop focusing on commentary so much. There's no way we're gonna top good Charlotte anyway. Vampiro appears way too late into the beatdown to taunt Bernie away from the corpse he's beating to try and lure him up to the rafters. He begins to climb the ladder up to him and we fade away. I meant what I just said. I'm done focusing on the commentary team. From now on, just focusing on interviews, on promos, on matches. Blocking them out of my mind, I don't care who's on commentary. Next week on Wrestling Society X, we'll have our very special musical guest, Pitbull. Did he just, he just said Pitbull? Let's get to next week immediately. Welcome to Wrestling Society X. My name is Chris Kloss, sitting next to Brett Ernst. And at this point in time, I would like to introduce our very special guest, Pitbull. Yeah! 
I'm a big wrestling fan. Let's go. I'm ready to see somebody do some crap. I want to see him jump like off the top. Though. That's what I want to see. This guy gets it. Everyone be careful and hide your middle-aged white moms, all right? It's Mr. 305, Mr. Worldwide, Mr. Take a Picture of Me with a Kodak Pitbull. This match means nothing as the cartel attacks Los Pochos Guapos and puts another dead fish on them. Is this going to happen every time? When are they going to run out of fish? I think they already did. This looks like the last fish they used. Just a little worse for wear. Are these guys going to open every show? And in front of Pitbull, they call out the cartel to fight and then take action. Now, the distinction between a fight, a brawl, and a match are very important in the world of professional wrestling. We don't know who's involved or what this even is, but cartel wins by pinfall, so I guess it was a match. Oh, there's no rules. Well, then why am I even watching this, man? That's more of a question for me than it is for anyone else. You know what I like? They look like the underdog took that one right there. Pitbull is taken apart of this establishment with every baseline observation. He's right though. Mr. Bull does know his sh That's gotta be the same fish. We get a backstage brawl right after, like we haven't already hit our brawl quota. But they don't play new metal over this one, so all we hear is a bunch of echoey slaps. <laughs> Hey guys, look, it's Jack Evans. I sure hope he doesn't say anything weird. Boom, konnichiwa, Lacey. You looking hey, you fine as always. Ugh. In fact, I just picked this one up, Lacey. Oh, what you got, Lacey? Show me what you got. They may not be able to be sued by fake fans, but... That doesn't give them immunity. We finally get another championship match, the blood feud we've been setting up for weeks. And due to this important occasion, we get an integral part of DNA on wrestling TV, the hype package. Too bad it isn't any good. You know that you wouldn't download a car anti-piracy ad? It's edited like that. It also kind of sounds like that. The font choice and music is almost exactly the same. Enough showmanship. This is the main event, not including all the extra internet matches we're gonna get, but you know, main, main event, main event. For the championship, for revenge, the man who disfigured Bernie's face so that a man on the internet could call him a cruel name years later. Let's get this thing going. It's worth noting that at this point, we're only like nine minutes into what we know is a 22 minute episode. This could be the longest match in Wrestling Society X history in this company's very, very short history. Couldn't help but notice that there's another coffin out here. Revenge is a dish best served in an exploding wooden box. Any thoughts on this, Pitbull? Any thoughts on the exploding coffin match, Pitbull? Pitbull? And this match is officially underway. The title is on the line. We should name it Karma. Since, you know, he burnt, that's it. Banderas, Banderas burnt Vampiro. You know, it, it all works out. This is a title match. It's named Karma. Well said. Another crowd spot? I feel like we're pushing our luck. There's this wrestling idea that you can tell how a match is going to go by the first minute. And it just started and we're already on the outside. So I love that. I think Vampiro's going to bounce back, though. Oh, he needs to bite him in the ear right quick. Trying to get through his feet right now. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. What I tell you? I wonder what would happen if you asked Pitbull about this match today. Would he remember any of it? In the middle of this match, after the commercial break, we get another vignette of the kidnapper brainwashing. They use this opportunity to hype up their return match on WS Extra. Weeks of build after the most interesting story of them being kidnapped for them to come back reborn and renewed and debut on the internet show. A reminder, this isn't 2020's internet or even 2010's internet. This is their website in 2007. Maybe don't zoom this far out. It really shows how empty the bunker is. Light tube table spot with bleeding back is allowed, but fireball is not. Also classic collapsible box spot. Find their way out of that, that destroyed stage now. And the fans better get the hell out of the way real quick. Look like Tom and Jerry. You think I'd make fun of that, but he's right on the nose here. The referee should try and stop this, Can't, should no, he? No, absolutely oh, not. Man. The title is on the line. Come on, Brent, this is Wrestling Society X. So you think the match is going to stop? Yeah, there's no rules. Why doesn't anyone else interfere in this match? The last guy that beat up the champion got a championship match. No, and became the champion. I know the future doesn't really matter to a company that was dying ever since it started, but you're really gonna have this guy be your champion over Vampiro? I have a sinking suspicion that Vampiro was not eager to return. Chris, and that has gotta be the Quizmo sandwich of the match. Hmm, you could say that, yes. The show ends, but just in case you missed that entire match and everything that just happened, they recap the entire thing on WS Extra as soon as it starts with Dracula music. Dracula, I will attack you, bro, you'll be spectacular when I set you on fire. I love the gimmick where Fabian adds something new to his appearance every week. 
as he stares into our souls with his new eyeliner. We get another recap of another match that just happened. What else is new? We get to the tag match that was announced on the actual show as the commentators try to explain the emo brothers to Pitbull and get him to shit on them, but he simply does not care. I think Pitbull just figured out what show he was on. The new and improved Dragon Gate comes to the ring as I think the crowd chants Mortal Kombat, which they must have been told to. And if that's the case, my question is, why? Jimmy Jacobs claims to be emotionally secure, whatever that means. Uh, I think it means gay. So we're just going mask off now then, huh? Not even cracking jokes. Yeah, yeah, they're gay, and I just like them for it. But I guess they're tag teaming on him. <laughs> Not you too, Pitbull. I thought you were different. So much for every day above ground being a good day. It sound like Pitbull was saying they tag team by day and tag team by, by night. night. There you go. There you go. Exactly. Pitbull, your comments on this match so far. I don't know what's going on right now, man. This guy's too fast for me. Oh. Right now, if you had the pitch. This got bitch slapped, though. <laughs> by the bitch? By the bitch. He got bitch slapped by the bitch. Bitch slapped, slapped by the bitch. Yeah, with the sunset flip. No. Oh, what's sunset. going on right there? Oh, double, double team. pin. One. I'd rather not watch this match. Oh. The pebbles. Hey, Yoshino, tell oh, me. did you see that? A fireball right to the eyes of Jimmy Jacobs. What the hell was that? Well, at least it's over. Just threw a fireball. A lot of, lot of flaming going on. Oh. My god. So the way Team Dragon Gate became better and reborn after rigorous training is winning because their manager interferes. I was kind of right. This is basically no payoff. They announced this next match as a three-way war, and honestly, I'm excited. I don't think we've seen a triple threat in this company yet, and on top of that, honestly, just excited to not have to watch a tag match. But then, at least I like all these guys. The White Boy and the NES character team up, Trailer Park Boys, that 70s team, who Pitbull loves, by the way. The emo boys are a little too fruity for my taste, but the 70s hairy dudes who shake their ass and get oiled up, love those guys. Those guys are sick. The baby oil? Oh, come on. <laughs> what is this? Week after week, the homoeroticism does not stop. <laughs> This is, this is oh man, that is funny right there. The fans are chanting for Nacho Libre, despite world-renowned star of the film, Human Tornado, not being in this match. I don't want to see any of them lose, despite the fact that they're all definitely jobbers. I love me a good jobber match. The Polish, Polish power! Oh, uh, Polish power, Ivan Putski. Oh, oh, oh yes. come on! Oh, come on! It was the Polish hammer, and look at this, another wardrobe malfunction! <laughs> see? He loves these guys. Me too, buddy. You know what that classic. is right there, folks? You gotta say no to crack, folks. That's say right. No to crack. crack kills. Exactly right. You crack heard it kills. from Pitbull right here. What? That classic held the ropes open like the gentleman that he is. <laughs> no. Hey, Ellen Chris. went flying up and over and on top of all men. Hey, Chris, I'm, I'm objecting to that comment. That's my word. You guys are going on mute. I'm done. Matt Classic attempts to hit multiple pile drivers, making him technically the most extreme man in the company. We got five tag teams on this post show. The Trailer Park Boys win again as the internet show comes to a close. Or it would have. All right, guys, this is the first ever WSX dance off. Consequently, it's also its last. The best part of this are the roster members who agree to watch this and get legitimately hyped. Until the result is a draw and they decide the only way to actually see who's the best is for them to have a match. Which, yeah. That's what the show is. We are rapidly approaching the end here, so let's pick up the pace a little bit. We don't need to unpack any of that. Let's just move on. We're gonna turn up the heat! And in the end, Ricky Banderas, in an almost ironic turn of events, threw Vampiro through a coffin wrapped in barbed wire, which ended up exploding! Ironic implies that this was entirely accidental. Wait, was this entirely accidental? Do these coffins have like a 5% rate of accidentally spawning in? The Nameless Duo come to the ring, and if that isn't bad enough, Eric Cannon and his loser friend come to fight them, also without a name. Disturbing lack of team synergy in this match. So, that interview Eric Cannon had after his new friend lost that said earlier tonight, that was before this show then? Because he said, I got a guy coming to fight the cartel, which... He isn't. He's stuck in the opener with the worst team on the roster. But the girl in the mask who helped rescue them from the cartel is out here too. The commentators say she's watching her brother and Eric Cannon. So the new guy is her brother. I'm glad we spent the time here to sit and figure this out because it won't matter. The show's gonna end all the same. It's kind of a creepy feeling when you know something is ending soon. The hypothetically disappointing finale is right over the horizon. <laughs> Is he alive? 
and I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't miss it a little bit. That's basically how the match ends. Even though the light tube spot doesn't even happen to the legal men currently in the ring, that's the final spot. But then we cut to Los Pochos Guapas backstage who are currently feuding with the cartel. Imagine limping to the back after going through a bunch of light tubes and seeing these guys taking your spot brutal. They're tired of having dead fish placed on their bodies. They're tired of the disrespect. Now they want live fish. Piranhas. Los Pochos Guapos challenged the cartel to a piranha match for the Wrestling Society X finale. What they call the season finale, what we know as the finale finale. Now you may be asking, Andrew, what is a piranha match? What are even the rules of a piranha match? And the answer is, I don't know. There's never been one before. But isn't that a little bit exciting? Scorpio Sky comes out for a very rare non-tag match. Holding his awards from high school, Chris, it's embarrassing. I mean, I won awards in high school. I even forgot which ones I won. This man has never won anything in his life. I refuse to believe that. He's facing six Pac, and I feel like I didn't explain the last match very well, so let me go more in depth this time. <clears throat> Pac hits his finisher in under a minute, and then a little bit after, he hits his worst move, and he does less often, and then he gets the three for the win. Then they hectically throw it back to the backstage interview woman, like they're surprised that just happened. But this interview also catches Lizzie and Matt Seidel by surprise, and their dog, that they have and have always had. This show is gonna get me institutionalized. What's with all these rumors about you and Six Pac? See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. All this stuff about Pac is bullshit. Who cares if it be Scorpio Sky? So did I. Are you saying that you think something really is going on? Hello, I'm right here, and I can tell you there's nothing going on with me and Pac. This interview's over. Let's go, Kaylee. I wonder what the resolution to the story is gonna be. Didn't Pac attack Human Tornado backstage, and it's kind of implied that the now new WSX champion was working with him? How many dudes is this guy feuding with? Follow up question, how many of the guys he's currently feuding with does he know exist? The entrance themes have kind of faded into the background because unless you're DIFH, that 70s team, or the Trailer Park Boys, your music gonna sound like stock music. Not that 70s and Trailer Park don't sound like stock music. I just like them more. But Jack Evans and Human Tornado come out for a match and I'm fairly certain they have the exact same entrance theme. If you want to call it that. <laughs> This is the payoff from last week's sad dance-off, and now that we know that is the case, why even do the dance-off? Like, I appreciate it, but from a critical standpoint, why would you do that? But you can tell they have unfinished business as they keep busting out some dance moves. There's no noise in this arena, so they play a slap sound effect for Jack Evans, and it's, for lack of a better word, silly. Back Apparently this match is taking forever, as we have to have our commercial break right now. But don't worry, when you come back, he'll kick out of this pin. You know what? Things are starting to get a little slow around here. Exactly, we'll take the video off course a little bit. Let's do a live voting segment right here. All right, everyone vote down in the comments, but no cheating. All right, you must say it before I give the answer. Who thinks Human Tornado is gonna win and who thinks Jack Evans is going to win? Vote down below, I'll give you some time. Compose your comment, giving you some more time, get it all down there. Just write Jack Evans or Human Tornado, who you think is going to win this match. You got it in, sent it, comment out because nobody wins. It's a time limit draw. The match ran for a couple minutes and then we cut to commercial and wrestle for a couple more minutes and then oop, ran out of time. I assume there was some free afoot foot and the match didn't actually hit the time limit, which is why they have a commercial break in the middle so they can edit it so it seems a lot longer. But then later on WS Extra, they show the entire match. The match did last the entire time. I think actually making it the longest match in WSX history, but they couldn't stand for that. They had to cut to commercial. We can't have a match longer than five minutes. Skip it. At least the dozens of WS extra fans could watch it on the internet maybe one dozen what happened? let's get it let's get an official ruling here thank god let's get some professional to get in this ring and make some sense of it and it's fabian the official is fabian what is your job here exactly oh haven't you heard i'm the local rule master slash pimp and if that didn't suck enough the japanese boys appear backstage speaking japanese as they are wont to do but then they switch to english to tell us uh does anybody here speak all Japanese? Right. first of all what my boys are trying to say is, we challenge you to an exploding cage. Time ball. This match. An exploding steel cage match rig with a time ball. So the next episode, the final episode of Wrestling Society X, will feature a piranha match 
an exploding steel cage match, and maybe the payoff to a bunch of storylines in 22 minutes. Holy shit. And that's how the episode ends. Time limit draw to backstage segment. They really know how to keep your blood flowing. But it seems like next episode is must watch TV. I wouldn't dare miss that episode. But before then, the internet. Fabian isn't even bothered to stand up out of his chair and get out of this weird upward angle. And you know what? I don't blame him. He's got a lot on his plate. I mean, he's the announcer, the official, the financial advisor. I've just given up on talking about the guest commentators. No one can live up to Pitbull. But every time KIG comes to the ring with the bling ladder, they ask the guests about it. Now, have you ever seen a ladder that looks like that? Yeah. I've seen it on your show every week. They're here to face the Trailer Park Boys who beat them clean. And I mean clean, clean. No manager interference, no low blows, and again, no ladder spots. I would be pissed if as a wrestler, I had to carry out a heavy ass ladder every time and it's probably a lot heavier because of all the shit on it and then I didn't get to use it. Maybe we'll get some closure on the last episode but probably not. But remember, the Trailer Park Boys are on kind of a winning streak now, but all the other matches involve some kind of three and again, this one was clean. The storylines, if you even want to call them that, are either told to us through backstage vignettes, through the commentary, or entirely made up by me. Sorry. But it's only now occurred to me that throughout the entire series, we've only gotten one in-ring promo, and all it was was a dude saying, Vampiro, get your spooky ass out here, and we couldn't even really hear him. I mean, it makes sense. We barely have enough time for matches. Why would we have time for promo segments? I cannot stress enough, I had nothing to do with this show. I was five. So the Trailer Park Boys run over to the commentary desk, which is in the same building. See, we proved it! To maybe get some promo time, unless they cut away from them. And that's all good and all. I love hearing from them, but I don't know. I'm just... I'm worried I might not get another tag match. What do you think, computer? It's time to finish the best of three series to finally find out once and for all which tag team is the least or most gay. DIFH has beaten 70s team once, 70s team has beaten DIFH once, who will come out on top in tonight's internet exclusive main event. It's not okay to play with my heart like this and make my favorite teams fight. Arm ringer now from Jimmy Jacobs onto Joey Magnum Ryan. He's got he models himself after the hit TV show in the 80s, Magnum P.I. Yeah, you know. That's why they're that 70s team. You blew it. You just blew the gimmick wide open. It's ruined now. Magnum, who is of course modeled after 80s TV show star, oils himself up to hit the drop kick. I'd love him. Uh, I have a quick question. Uh, why is Tyler Black's hair, what's in it? Is that just water? I'm glad that even back then, Seth Rollins' hair was perpetually wet. Play the clip of the shield pouring water all over themselves backstage if we can find it. The emo boys come out on top by Black accidentally hits Jimmy Jacobs by thrashing too hard. Don't get between an emo and his thrashing. Alternatively, even though they lost, that 70s team support each other and help each other to the back. Nothing can tear them apart. In a company where every single tag team is on the verge of collapse, it's nice to know that my favorite boys are sticking together no matter what. They have each other. And I guess by the rules that they didn't say, but I'm just assuming they are now officially the gayest tag team ever. And I'm happy for them. That's another thing. Professional wrestling has one of the most voracious shipping communities. Maybe not in 2006, but man, you're going to complain about them acting gay. A lot of hugging, male hugging. This, maybe this match should take a place in West Hollywood. I guess so. I got to stop bringing up shipping. It seems like I care about it more than I actually do. What a great tag match, but I hope we get to see my favorite tag teams one last time. Tag team turmoil and tension here in WSX is rolling high. So you know what, Lacey? How about next week? We have a four-way frenzy. Four teams in a big match. DIFH, that 70s team. Trailer Park Boys, Luke and Alcatraz, and check this out. How about the winner of that match gets a chance to be in the first ever WSX Tag Team Title Tournament. Okay, so the last episode, which is 22 minutes 44 if you want to put some matches on the internet show, already has a Piranha match, an Exploding Steel Cage match, and now this. Not only is it a multi-tag match with multiple different teams, but the winner gets put in a tournament. A tournament with who? The winner of these four teams gets a spot, which implies the other three do not get a spot. It'd be weird if they lost this match, but then we're also in the tournament. But that means this tournament, if we're basing it off of Wrestling Society X teams, is going to be like four teams. I guess you could do a four-team tournament of three matches if you had time. Because there's too much stuff packed in this last episode. I'm more excited for this final episode than I have been for anything Anything about this show, I think that's fair to say. I was about to say anything ever, but that's 
I don't want to lie to you guys. After this, they do explain how the exploding cage match works, but I think it's better for everyone if I just don't show you. We just saw two huge challenges made, and that means next week on the season finale of Wrestling Society X. Yeah. Season finale. Oh, that's so sad. We're not getting that tag tournament, are we? The tag match was supposed to be the main event, but then we have Fabian dubbed over last minute to let us know that we're about to see the parts of the Human Tornado and Jack Evans match that we didn't get to see due to commercial. But I don't really care because we know in the end, none of this matters. It's gonna end in a tie. So here we are. <laughs> Final episode of Wrestling Society X. We've been through a lot together, you and I, you specifically the person watching this, this one person. It's been a wild ride. We've seen exploding coffins and backstage lairs and Gaussian blur fireballs and homophobic commentators and dance-offs and kidnappings and pitbull. And while I wouldn't say I enjoyed this ride per se, anything ending after a long period of time, it gets to you. For you guys, it's only been however long this video is, but for me, it's been a month of just Wrestling Society X. This show has dominated my life for a month but I think I'm ready to let it go. And despite it being shitty or trashy or just dumb, the people working on this show didn't know this was gonna be its last episode, but we do. So for all the wrestling fans and all the people that decided to stay and watch this just out of support, I appreciate it greatly. Are you guys ready to see how it all ends? Are you guys ready to jump into the belly of the beast? Are you guys ready to get hate crimed one last time? <laughs> to the season finale of Wrestling Society X. Are you ready for the most insane night of your life? Well, let's tear it up and burn this down. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know what I expected a piranha tank to be, but this is too small, right? Like regardless, there's gonna be some trickery to make it not actually dangerous, but this, they need a bigger tank, right? This is actually just a goldfish tank. It's like that one time AEW f***ed up the jumping off the top of the cage spot and the exploding ring spot and a bunch of defenders were like, oh, what, you wanted people to actually die? No. There's other ways of making this look better though. Just don't cut to the crash pad and add some extra pyro. It's not rocket science. Or you could add a laser sound effect and a Gaussian blur after effect. That'd be really cool. That will come back. Apparently the rules to this match is that you gotta put your opponent fully into the tank and then close the lid for a three count. How fresh. The band New Found Glory performs before the big show, and again, we don't get to see it. Uniform for this show, the band joins commentary team and by the band, I mean, two members. These guys got Pitbull and they couldn't get the rest of Newfound Glory. Who was bigger in 2006? Oh, props to the band members for walking immediately. Know your worth. Speaking of knowing your worth, we get a hype package for the cartel because they did just appear a couple weeks ago. Like in the grand scheme of the show as a whole, they may as well be debuting right now. That being said, do we have time for this? Like, yeah, 44 minute show as a whole, but we did get a bunch of gimmicks booked. How long is this gonna take? I'm gonna assume whoever turns this show on and is catching it for the first time, will get the general gist of these guys and what's going on. Oh, so that's the Piranha Tank, huh? Fabian announces the match as he has finished his transformation into full mime. We get to do a little accidental boundary breaking as the camera catches the inside of the entranceway and it's just a shipping container with a back, like it doesn't go anywhere. Which means that isn't where the gorilla position is or their backstage area. So whoever is having their entrance, that wrestler needs to come out, go into that shipping container, and then enter through there. Again, they also need to stand there until their entrance starts. Like, it doesn't go anywhere. Two members of the ever-expanding The Cartel face off against Los Potros Guapos in a Piranha fish tank match. Little Cholo, they call him that several times, so I really hope that is his name. He nearly misses the tank, but in doing so, nearly spikes his head off the stairs and lands awkwardly on the concrete. But thank God he didn't land in the water. Punched on by Piranha! And it's Chaos in. saving his partner, Aguilera, and we're finally seeing some continuity! Hey, wait a minute. Are you guys reading from my script? He's not all the way in, but he's almost in! Ask That's first. it! They're gonna eat his ass! 
They must have gotten the first draft. That's a joke. All my videos are first drafts. Aguilera has the choice to toss Little Cholo into the tank or through the table, and he chooses the table spot because he's just that extreme. But due to constant miscommunication, or as they call it, some continuity, Chaos gets thrown fully into the tank and the cartel locks him in for the three count. Now, I'm sure the spot is plenty dangerous to humans. I mean, being locked in that tiny tank, I'm sure there's air, but it must be really stress-inducing. But I'm not worried about the humans here. When the match started and I saw it, I thought, oh, cool, they're using real fish. And then when the match ended, I thought, oh god, they're using real fish. Because I do not care for the human's health at all right now. I'm worried about the live fish he's kicking and thrashing around. I know it's redundant to get mad at a wrestling show that was already canceled in the year 2007. But then what's the point of this video, you know? Do better. You shouldn't use real fish, but if you have to, get a bigger tank. Little side note, the day I'm writing this ending part, somebody got stabbed in the dick at an XPW show. Wrestling isn't always a force for good. And you cannot argue the fact that right now the cartel is the most dominating force in the WSX. I can't wait to see more of them in the future. Vampiro's life must have been on a downward spiral ever since he lost his title because he's downgraded from his own private lair to the generic backstage area that looks like if you punch the walls, the sparkly pink stuff that burns would come out. Vampiro interrupts Scorpio Sky's interview and then chases him to the ring. Vampiro means business and Scorpio's pants fall down. Haha, ha, look at his bum bum. It's funny undies. Haha, ha, poopy. And I don't think anything could be more juvenile than what I just said. Scorpio's naked! You just saw his Never mind. That's what pops, you guys. Like I keep saying over and over, not only is this the final episode in broadcast, but it's also only 44 minutes, including the online show, and we have a lot of matches scheduled. So they use this opportunity to bring a bunch of guys who aren't booked out to get beat up by Vampiro. Here's your TV time, boys. Every time I think I'm starting to understand this show, final episode. They bring in something that changes everything I thought I knew. The champion comes out to confront Vampiro and beat him up, and the fans Cheer? The guy who attacked Vampiro by shooting an After Effects Gaussian blur at him is attacking the man who just beat up a bunch of other wrestlers. Is Bernie the face? Is anybody in this company a good guy? Forget what I said about the interview area. We cut to Six Pac talking to Lizzie in the dingiest set I have ever seen. As they're conversing in the crack house, Seidel breaks down a fake door and starts fighting them. <laughs> Shut up, bitch! Is there anyone in this company that doesn't hate Lizzie for some reason? Also, you guys were just having a conversation. What happened? I can't wait to see where this feud goes. Oh, the show got canceled? Well, I know Seidel makes his way to WWE shortly after this, and X-Pac is in there sometime, so I wonder if they'll continue to have any kind of interactions. Oh, they've never crossed paths? I've just been informed by Fabian Kalen that in addition to the WSX Championship held by Ricky Banderas, a new title will be created here in Wrestling Society X. This belt will be all about high-flying, death-defying, no-limits action. That's right, in the coming episodes of Wrestling Society X, which there are none, there's going to be a new championship title belt that only high flyers can compete for, which is almost all of their roster. The only people who don't qualify for that are Vampiro and Bernie, so the current main event. Actually, this makes sense. If you ever want anyone else to be champion, this belt will be their only chance. Or it would have been had the show not been canceled after 10 episodes. We get the second match announced prior, the exploding time bomb match. And the rules to this match are Stupid. The new and improved question mark Team Dragon Gate versus Filth and the Furry one last time for that joke. The kidnapper that no one seems to question conspires to keep M Dog the Furry on the outside, making the beginning of this a handicap match. Eventually, M Dog climbs his way to the top of the cage and crossbodies everyone in the ring. There's a lot of that in this match, and obviously, when a wrestler does a high spot, they're going to need a lot of wrestlers to catch them. The higher the spot, the more people down there you need. But in a match that's only 2v2, you're gonna end up hitting your teammate more often than not. The flip spots aren't over yet. Teddy Hart does several flips off the top, and I can't shake the feeling that I've seen this somewhere before. The serial brainwashing kidnapper gets in the ring to add more bodies to a future jump spot. And here it comes. Teddy Hart climbs to the rafters that I somehow did not notice until right now. But instead of setting off the titular time bomb, he does a flip and hits everyone, knocking them all over. This is pandemonium. You know how Inferno matches were built for Kane and Buried Alive matches were built for The Undertaker? Taker. I think exploding time bomb steel cage matches were built for Teddy Hart. I mean, think of the possibilities. Almost going to the bomb! <laughs> Teddy Hart getting to his feet! <laughs> Teddy Hart, he, he just got blinded! Oh, this poor... <laughs> Whipping 
Can he hurt it? Yoshida gets to the top and hits the time bomb button, escaping as an air raid siren plays. I know that was just a bunch of clips, and I didn't actually really talk about the match, but that's what the match was. A bunch of clips. People use the term spot fest as an insult, implying that spots don't also tell a story themselves, and I disagree with that in every case except this one, where there is no story to this match and it is just spots. This is a good way to end this episode. It's also a good way to end off the final episode of WSX on TV. That's how it all ends. At least for the wider television viewing audience, what do the WS Extraites get on the internet show? I just made that up right now. They get not a whole lot. The whole first half of this is just replays of the episode that just happened. And again, who is this for? Oh, it's just like this video. Your online exclusive show, where the website is named after it and the URL has the name in it. That is exclusive content solely based off of this already existing TV show that airs directly after that show. What is the point of the recap? Again, who is this for? You're struggling to fill time? Maybe have any of the dudes who got beat up by Vampiro have a match, or give one of these talented speakers a microphone and put them in the ring. Regardless of all that filler, it's time for the actual final match. The Four Team Frenzy. Do the Beast Boy thing. The last thing we see in Wrestling Society X is a four-way tag match that sets up a tournament that never happens. Dope. And boy, am I excited. Trailer Park Boys, DIFH, that 70s team, the other team, three out of four ain't bad. We get to see my favorite teams one last time. We get to see Magnum's ass one final time. I'm gonna miss that big old thing. Drives him down. One, two, that's it. There you go. They're eliminated. Elimination? I didn't know that. Do we have time for that? Evidently we do, as that 70s team is pinned immediately after. I now care about this match 33.3% less. But hey, it's our final show, and we want to showcase all our beloved teams. KIG comes out to beat up the Trailer Park Boys. I sure can't wait to see what comes of this. Nothing. We have but minutes left in this show's existence. All we're missing now are all the guys who are on the main show and the masked friends. It's only now occurred to me that the final episode of WSX only consists of tag matches. How poetic. KIG chases Trailer Park to the back, but they weren't the legal men in the match, and nobody counts. But they don't bring them up again, and then it becomes a 2v2. Did the Trailer Park boys get eliminated? Is that a rule? Could anyone have done this the entire time? Chase anyone to the back and they automatically lose. This company truly is extreme with an X. Put that in there. But now that half of the focus is on the emo boys, the commentators will not let up. I won't miss that. They make a joke about Jimmy Jacobs having a tampon because he's a girl twice and nothing is more embarrassing than repeating a joke thinking no one heard it but in reality it just sucked the joke is girls are gay no no the joke is gay boys have periods no i'm mixing this up which one do i hate it doesn't matter anyway because jimmy jacobs proves them all wrong by winning the match with a roll up that was the final match. The final thing we see in the ring are these two celebrating together. This Tyler Black fellow seems pretty talented. I hope he does something in the future that eventually tops Wrestling Society X. He didn't. Actually, that's not entirely true. They're the last thing we see, but not the last thing we hear. The final words of WSX Wrestling Society X on MTV. You know what? You got the, 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 the crazy strong guy against the emotional guy. You put those two together and hey, Chris, you might just have your dream man. <laughs> and listen to this. The guys hate it and the girls love it. Maybe with an exception to Brett Ernst next to me over here. A gay joke. Another gay joke. Way to go out with a bang. If anything exemplifies what this show represented, it isn't an exploding ring or extreme spots or tag team matches. It's the commentary team getting in some gay jokes. That is their legacy. And that was Wrestling Society X, one of MTV's very strange ventures that were too weird not to talk about. Remember Date My Mom and Next, where a bunch of people dated on a moving bus? No, because no one remembers it, and it's probably for the better. With the rise of streaming, it seems that trashy, garbage, reality TV is making a comeback, mostly dating shows. So who knows, maybe someday we'll see something like this again but hopefully not. The Attitude Era, where everyone was sweared and shown boobies and being vulgar and blood, took forever to die off. 
And ever since then, every wrestling company has been scrambling to figure out how to make professional wrestling cool when they missed the point that professional wrestling is cool. Yeah, I said it. I'm a huge wrestling fan, as you can tell. And I'd love to talk about it more. Unfortunately, I can't talk about major companies like WWE or AEW due to copyright chicanery. You think I'm in a normal mood for your games here? This whole chicanery? So maybe in the future, I will talk about more really weird short stint wrestling companies. What am I supposed to talk about next? TNA? That's ridiculous. I hope this video was enough to satisfy the masses, even though obscure wrestling show isn't a very popular topic, but I had to do this for myself. I had to stand by my guns. I've said it before. I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about. I need to stick to this and I'm not going to let any skeleton or game cart or computer tell me what I should and shouldn't talk about that'll get more views. Speaking of which, where is everyone? Escape pod deployed. Ship malfunction. I didn't know we had that. Escape pods or an overvoice. What's going on? Are we getting another call? Crash landing in 20 seconds. Well, I mean, crash landing is still landing, right? <laughs> if you're seeing this, I've crash landed somewhere and I need help. I, 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 they need whoever these are going to to send me some kind of robot sidekick to help me not die of boredom. Or Distress from the skies. It seems the ship these internet creatures frequent has fallen from the stars onto a mysterious planet. Where did the skeleton go? Who was the computer referring to? What's the deal with that fellow in yellow? And where is our funny YouTube man? Find out what happens in the next thrilling installment of the Natter Chamber, where he'll probably be talking about something else no one asked for. <laughs> Thank you.